The thing about things that lurk below anything, much less a house of horror and death, is that they're usually waiting for something or someone. And let me tell you, it's not to invite them to a dinner party or walk through a garden or a game of chains. But now, the wait is over for the thing that lurks below the house that once belonged to some folks that seemed like such a normal, happy family, don't they always? The time has come for the shape and the amber to make good on all that waiting, which she's been doing for quite a while. Although she's got all the teeth in the world, you can never have too many, at least as far as she's reckoning. The trap is set, the prey approaches. Now let's all watch with bated breath to see what happens. I know the hag moon above is watching too, with a grin full of its own pearly wax. You stand in the ancient chamber filled with teeth and amber light. Called by the rasping feminine voice within the monolith, it stands before you across the pool of viscous red liquid. The chill clings to you like a shawl, and the stench of iron assaults your sense of smell. The amorphous shape slinks back and forth before you in a beckoning motion. Call it. All around you, you see now as this room is illuminated by the glow from within this amber teeth what looks like rotting fleshy gums piles and piles pools of blood the smell is almost overbearing as you can't help but stare at this thing inside it that small shape of near complete darkness but a wisp as it moves this way and that, sometimes taking strange forms that's fully hard to see as it calls out to you to come towards it. Uh, how, is it like a enchanting come towards it? Or is it just like, a, I have my own wits about me? You have your own wits about you, for now. Is if I'm misunderstanding, I apologize. Is it encased? Yes. So it in is. It, it's like a amber monolith, and inside, in the very center, like think about the amber from Jurassic Park. Yep. Where there should be a mosquito, there is not. And we can hear this creature. Yes. No. But it's it's almost as if you can hear it in your mind. But but what does the creature look? At? It's a dark, wispy. It okay. has no form. Okay. It's okay. So it's a form like a wispy. shadowy, and it, it looks like it's occasionally trying to make itself into a form, but you're far enough away that you can't see much more than that. What the fuck is that? I've never encountered anything like this before. Well, I cannot say that I have either, but. This appears to just be another day of smiting evil. And I will uh, flash a uh, smile as I run my teeth over my fangs <coughs> and draw my sword and raise my shield and, and, and look at this thing and, and try to get a better understanding of what it is. Uh, roll a perception check. Skills. Oh, not bad. 19. You... You raise your shield and you stare deep within this amber monolith. And you see the shape move and undulate and start to create some sort of shadowy form. And for a second, it almost looks to be the face of a of a malformed beaver with rows and rows and rows of sharp teeth for just a split second before once again enfolding into just wisps of dark, almost smoky, Form. Whatever happens, do not <clears throat> fall for whatever wiles or charms that it may try to inflict upon us. Well, it gave us a bit of a friendly invite. Perhaps it can. It just wants a conversation. It probably gets lonely down here with nothing to talk to but thousands of human teeth. <laughs> I suppose you might be correct. I would advise not getting too close, Jericho. You don't really believe that, do you? The teeth didn't get here by accident. We didn't come down here to stare at this. Well, I... What I worry about... At least... The reason I like Jericho's plan... 
<clears throat> is because for now, it doesn't appear as though it can reach us. I raise my sword up to the this monolith and I say... Roll a perception check. Oh. Oh, uh, 21. Nice. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You look towards this thing again and you see the 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 smoky form once again begin to coalesce and create a new form. That which looks to be a deer. And as it, as it opens its mouth, its eye is shining mm. wide. It's very small within this monolith. You see rows and rows and rows of sharp teeth. Uh, Before once again, it swirls into itself and dissipates into just that swirling mass of black smoke. With Do my, we all see that or just him? He's the only one noticing that. With okay. my sword raised and pointed at it, still speaking to Yorgrim, I say, I think that if it could, it would have struck out at us by now. It clearly appears to be trying to intimidate us. It's taking on forms of, of, of different beasts with horrific rows of teeth. Like a gross animal? Exactly. We've been dealing with a lot of gross animals. What kind of gross animals have you seen in there, Mr. Sermarius? What looked like a beaver, maybe a deer. A deer? Oh, dear. I Fair. think that whatever it is, it's stuck. Any relation? I don't think so. On account of your antlers and all? I think <clears> not. <throat> Maybe this is the way of beaver. It's the kid all this. He said beaver. Are you sure it's a beaver? I mean, I can only be so sure. Yes, I believe that's what I saw. Well, well why don't we just try something a little bit... A little bit simple to start us off here. A little slow number. Just uh, then I'll take off my hat. I'll, you have my support, Jericho. I'll gesture for it. I'll say, well, how do you do, Miss uh, Voice in the in the Amber? If I may call you that, my name is... How uh, close are you getting to the Amber monologue? Uh, <laughs> I would say I'm not stepping past Marius. Okay. I would say... Mar- I would say place your tokens where you would be in the room. So right. I would want to be 10 feet away. This is like basically, <laughs> basically blood. I want to be 10 feet away. Can you place my token for Are we? Are, are you waiting into like the blood and teeth? No, fuck no. Okay, That's so, what I'm saying. That's like 10 no. feet away. So right? I would be about here. And then your grim would have been close to me yeah, yeah, over here. Well, well, we can, a, he's got a mini. Oh. He can just remove his token. I'm just so excited to be here. And we're just going to kind of like... Stack up a little bit, even though it, you know, yeah. whatever. Okay, token's gone, and Yorgum's there. Um, and so I'm I would be spread st- out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so ten feet is the official distance. Yeah, I would be in the back, hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I will have said that. Oh, 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 no, I'll keep talking, and I'll say, "Oh, my name is Old Jericho of Sticks, but you can call me Jericho. Most folk do. Uh, we're just wondering uh, how you find yourself in this lovely home you got here, not." Not horrifying or malevolent at all. You wait for a moment. I'm not this. You wait for a moment and you hear, you should come a little closer. Come closer to me. And I can give you all that your heart desires. Do we all hear that? Yeah. Just wait into the pool. It will feel warm at first, but you'll get used to it. But don't do that. Well, well, I think she's a little mistaken. I, on account of m- my not having a heart, me not having a heart, I not having a heart. You just, you seem a bit persuadable. I don't want you just listening to it, and doing whatever it says. Well, I'm not persuadable at all. I, I, I only listen to the best uh, consultants, which is Virgil here. You're saying you burst the best consultant and it's done nothing but harass you your entire existence. I've been waiting a long time for this, and I don't have much more time to wait. Step closer and allow me to give you my gift. And you can feel it's the mass is looking towards you, Jericho. You have something that resides within. I would make a better friend, I think. Jericho, I told you. You hear that, Virgil? Be aware of the wiles. You hear that? Well, I, what, what, what are you trying to do in there? What are you trying to do out here? What are, what are you trying to do, Miss Lady? I don't even know your name. I would ask that you release me from within. From within. I've been trapped here for too long. The witch has left me captive. I'm gonna start sounding like a pirate now. <laughs> so, I get very, I get heavy talking. That's okay. Um, do we all hear this? 
Oh yes, it, and it doesn't sound like it's coming from within the the monolith itself. It sounds like it's coming from within your heads. But you do see that as this thing speaks to you, that it is moving around the inside of this monolith as if it's directing its attention towards whoever's speaking to it. Um, I'd like to see, is it taken a new shape within? He mentioned well, a beaver. He mentioned a beaver and a deer. I'd like to see, like, in my notice... Oh, 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 oh. Let's see. <laughs> you don't see uh, you don't, you don't, <laughs> Oh, Lethico, your what do you eyes see? fall out of your head. Uh, <laughs> perception? Oh, wow, it's actually coming 13. Oh, okay. 13, that's, that's good enough. You look within, and as it addresses you, you notice that it takes a very similar form. Or a form that you're familiar with, the form of a crow. But as its mouth opens, where you would expect to see just the inside of a beak, you see rows and rows of horrific, gnarled teeth. I knew it. I sheathed my sword. It cannot harm us. If it could, it would have. It needs us for something, and as long as we don't get close, we're not going to release it. Well, it mentioned the witch trapped it here. Could it be an enemy of our enemy? Yeah, it certainly could, and may be able to provide us some useful information. But we're certainly not going to bargain, deal, or release whatever this thing is. So who are you? Roll a, pers- roll a persuasion check. Ooh. Well, you Love know, it. fair night, I, I couldn't have asked that better myself. And I gave you Barnick inspiration. <laughs> inspiration. Inspiration. You have Barnick inspiration. D6, it's a D6, right? yeah. I'm gonna need more than that. <laughs> Hold on, the D6. What else twist. you got? We have twists. We have twists. We have twists. We do have twists. Yeah, twist, 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 twist it. Yeah. Twist it. Twist it. Twist it. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. Oh, bad. yeah. Thank you, Thank you, Tess. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Wrestling geek. 25. Oh, oh my Thanks, god. Thanks, Chatteroo. Let's go. It's, it turned into what? 25. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, you, you see as the form undulates towards you, Farron. Uh, what was the question that you asked? Who are you? I'm the lady of the crooked teeth. If we're going to be friends, you can call me Kellen. <laughs> oh, wait, what they say is story. true. An enemy of my enemy is my friend. The witch has trapped me here, so with my help, we can assist each other. The teeth, it makes me strong. But I feel my power sucked from me. Let me out. Wade into the pool. I just look at Brixer. She it, it can't possibly think that we're that stupid. And you can't possibly think that I couldn't do anything to you. You think you're safe here, just being farther from me? And you see is out of the midst of the bubbling pool of liquid what appears to be some kind of fleshy root begins to move up and out. I control more than you think, and I am being kind, but don't press your luck. What are you looking for? You have some kind of bargain? Because if you want to, if you want to cut a deal, it needs to be some kind of benefit on both sides. She looks towards you or what you imagine would be looking towards you. You found yourself struggling with bargains before. Hmm. What if you could trade one bargain for another? One that is more kindly to you. What do you mean? Can you undo all this? I just point up and down. Roll a roll a persuasion check. Hmm. Oh, big money. What did not I roll? Bad, not 14? Bad, 14. Not bad. Uh that is a 21. Let's go. Oh. What can the Lady of the Fame do? Mr. Crossroads has no power here. 
Not in my land. Step into the pool. Let me take what is his. Well, well Miss, Miss, Miss Kellen, if I could call you that. Uh, I still have my hat off. I'm just kind of gesturing. <clears throat> if, if you're... If you're so trapped here, why is there a whole bunch of teeth? And, 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 and who put it here? And you, you seem to be having it made up in, 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 in the kind of manner that I presume you care this that cavern to be in. Roll persuasion check. Ooh. Roll a little fella. That was not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's still, no it's still a 12. I've told you once and I won't tell you again. The witch has trapped me in the ember. She needs my power, but she does not want me free. You could have me free and at your side. So is she bringing you these teeth? It keeps me strong, but my power fades from me. Let me out. I need you all to roll wisdom. Uh, uh, I don't like this. Not a fan. So I would not like bad. to ask the DM. Oh. You may do question. so. Roll a persuasion check to see if I want to answer. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, wow, really good. A I 27. Well, my DC is 35. Oh, oh wisdom saving throw? Yeah, yeah, I am. Wisdom. I'm I'm to what, what is your question? So, with my construction and the nature of my chest cavity, do I get the sense of a similarity? between what's the business that's happening in here and the business that's happening in here at all. Roll an intelligence check. That's a good question. I'm not very smart, I do, I must say. I do declare. Oh, that is a nine. No. <laughs> a genuine I, nine. What I would say is that I would say you've noticed some similarities in the sense that this clearly seems to be some powerful entity that is trapped in some way. But your experience with what's going on with you wasn't an amber monolith. It was nothing like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how much more you would associate them as aside, aside from one, you know, powerful entity, another powerful entity. Got it. One in me, one in Amber. Mm. Mm. 21. Okay. Uh, 12. I also wrote a 12 with my new viewer recommended. Dun, dun, dun. Oh. Oh. I can't, oh, thank you. I can't really see. I got 21, too. Uh, if you nice. join our Discord nice. and recommend us dice, uh, I will buy one. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, 22. Thanks. You, you feel the room shake beneath your feet as it is clear that whatever this entity is, is growing frustrated. As all of you begin to feel the tendrils of, this, of these fleshy, almost vine-like uh, roots as they start to rot or start to move up and encircle your bodies, you feel them latch onto you and you can see that these tendrils coming up out of the fleshy earth that you are standing on appear to look like the roots of a tooth. And embedded in them are tooths of all sizes, of all of all makes of animals, human, any kind of tooth you can imagine is embedded inside of the fleshy um, flesh of, of these roots as they begin to wind around you and you feel for a second your mind overcome with lust. Lust. So did Darius, oh, you feel closest to? lust as you look towards this thing and you think to yourself about that moment, the, the single defining moment that caused you to be what you were. And if you hadn't succumbed to lust, you wouldn't be here right now. Oh. There would have been no ticket given to you. There would have been no need for you in this land that you find yourself essentially trapped in. In this creature, this entity, says that they can overtake your dark lady and you feel a lust you feel a lust for power that could wipe the slate clean your grim you got it told as well right i did i sure you did. feel overcome with sorrow oh, no. a sorrow for the loss 
of every single person that you had to watch fall because of your, your blind faith. You feel sorrow for the work that you have done, the lands that you have been to, the people you have interred, all hoping that one day that sorrow would, would be wiped clean from the stone on your back. And you feel sorrow that it has not happened yet but this entity before you. This entity claims to be able to help you. Blind faith caused you to find yourself in this situation that you're in now. But could this be different? Could this entity lay your sorrows to rest? The both of you feel, I'm not going to say compelled, but you feel less hesitant as these feelings come over you. The rest of you feel no pull, additional pull towards this entity as you wipe the, the and and try to pry the roots from your body. But we all experience you the all, entanglement. You all experience the entanglement, and it only happens for a second before they begin to slither back down mm. into the gummy substance that you're standing mm. upon. But the two of you now have this, this thought just pressing in the back of your mind. Mm. What could be? Ugh, now, Briggsy makes a very compelling point. Ah, ah. We might as well hear her out. See if there's anything that we can do to help. But if she wants to- Always aid. If she wants to parlay, you best step down. Give her these roots. And you had seen that they had already begun to uh, make their way back into the earth beneath your feet. I would agree with Briggsy. There's no need for such an affront. Well, I don't know about you all. If you're made out of horrible soul stuff, what can contain dark horrors within your chest cavity, but it seems as if she's got a lot of power here and is able to convince people to do terrible things. What if it's better that she's a little... a little more trapped? I've convinced Clank, Clank. no one to do anything. The witch is the one that's the, tr- that's the troublemaker here. I think she's right. I mean, the, the, the witch is our main enemy. We've been told that that's why we're here. Uh, if someone can help us locate where they are and exterminate them, we might as well help. Besides, the maiden is trapped. She's she traps views. me because she's afraid of me. Nothing more. Why is she afraid of you? I'm powerful. Can she see the power I have trapped in this amber tomb? Are you more powerful than her? You'll have to release me to see. It's not enough. I can't but take why it would she word. trap me if I weren't? If she wasn't afraid, I could be ancient as I am. I just don't think that we can leave this poor thing trapped here. All need to I'm asking, your mind. All I'm asking is to let me out. That's I'll asking a lot. You, I'll give you what you want. I'll help them. you. All you have to do is let me out. We came here with a specific goal. We've all done things we regret. She might have. She might be able to help. But this stinks to the heavens. This feels like a trick. And even here, this kind of looks like a crossroads. I'm not falling for your tricks. Well, maybe we don't release you, Miss Lady, Miss Kellen, if if that's fine for me to say. Perhaps we, until we get to know you a little bit better, perhaps transferring. You're fine with a, a roommate, right, Virgil? Oh, you actually would like a roommate? Maybe, well, I'm considering if that's actually not a good idea. Better, better her tormenting me than all these poor folk. Now, Briggsy, I, I don't understand the, the 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 change in thought. You were you were willing to make a deal not even five minutes ago. We might as well hear her out. 
uh, figure out what she wants, if she can help us, if she can point us in direction of the witches, why not? Oh, call me superstitious, but she's promising a lot. You can help all of us, you can solve all of our problems. Seems too good to be true. I only need one of you. Whichever one of you is the quickest will get all of your wishes granted. Step forward into the into the water. All, Let all, me out. All of our wishes? I, in what way? I, I need I'll to know how you're going you to from the chains you found yourselves and cap- captured in. You Trains. release me and I'll release you. Do I get the sense that Marius and Jorgrim are acting off? Roll, for, roll an insight check. Because they are. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Uh, what happens? Oh, no, now they should know. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if we step in the water? A natural one. Oh, boy. Oh, no, boy. they seem to be acting normally. Marius is, you know, he, he still hasn't done anything rash. He just seems to be looking at both sides of the coin, as it were. If you just step into the water. I'd take one step forward as I ask. Yes, you could let me in. And I could push her out. Yo, it is blood, not water, just so you know. That's exactly right. I call me superstitious, but if I see something in a puddle of blood and surrounded by teeth, I don't trust it. With with uh, that exchange, I would lean down at the edge of this water and dip my fingers into it. It's warm. Oh, Warmer than you would have expected. And, and, and breathe it in. The... The metallic scent of the blood is almost overwhelming, especially with this newfound lust that is just poking at the edge of your psyche. And I would like you to roll wisdom saving. Oh boy! boy. Oh. I'm almost a Viking at this. Thirty-five. Oh, it's a nine. No. You cannot help yourself Jesus. as you taste the blood. That's pooling around the edge of this. What's I, wrong with you? I would, uh, yeah, I would, I would have rubbed it between my fingers and smelled it, and then begun to taste it. And and then I wouldn't is, be able to help it myself. It is almost overbearing as you lean down and you begin to just lap up the blood at the pool uh, of this. I would. You you see as Maris's fangs begin to elongate, his uh, face became, becomes far more gaunt and and sallow, as he is uh, overcome by his um, by his dampier uh, uh, basal needs. You uh, gulp down a significant amount of this warm blood. And all the while, you hear only you hear her voice. Yes. I can make the sins go away. As soon as I see him bending down and starting to drink, I would take my staff and and kind of like pull it across, you know, your neck and your chest and pull you back steps yeah, away. From you'll, have, you'll have to make I'll a try. You'll have to make a strength know. contest. Pick a good dice. Pick a good just, dice. Uh, just thank a straight you, up Oscar. number plus strength. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, a twist. So a twist. All the four walls. Well, let's do the twist. Let's do the twist. So that, yeah, let's do the twist. Be lucky, be lucky, be lucky. Mm. Be lucky, be lucky, be lucky, be lucky. Oh, oh. Yeah. that's good. It's hard uh, to get all sexual uh, when someone's yeah, drinking. Yeah, yours is too blood real. Off of the yeah. floor. <laughs> Oh, is he like chewing on teeth too? No, I'm no. just drinking the blood. No, he's just. Uh, vampires don't eat teeth. Come on, man. Oh, are you okay? Plenty of Bobo with teeth. Plenty. Oh well, I didn't roll very well, so I got a ten. So you might be able to beat that. Twelve. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey you Baron, got me. you watch as Marius leans down. You're taking in this scene. This amber monolith rising up out of this pool of blood, almost like a stunted tooth Shut rising up out of the cavity in a jaw. As, oh. as he leans down and begins <laughs> just shoveling blood into his mouth, you see as it's dripping down his gaunt face, staining the cloth beneath his armor. And he is focused solely on the consumption of this liquid. As you take your staff and you, um, you pull it in front of him, grab it on both sides, and wrench him away from the edge um, quite easily as you finish um, consuming the last that had been on your hands. You begin to lick your hands free, uh, voracious for the taste of blood. As soon as she pulls me back uh, away from the edge of this this pool, um, I'm, I'm licking my hands uh, clean of, of, of the blood. 
I would immediately redouble and say, you, you, speaking to the creature, you can fix me, you can fix me. And I will attempt to walk forward into the pool okay. against her. Uh, Would you help her me? You'll, yeah. you'll, another shrink No, no, Varen, no. Varen, you gotta keep him. Marius is not being himself. And, uh, you, 17. Uh, Bardic inspiration. As I, 18. As oh, I, I need you to re-roll. No! Oh, you are inspiration. No. D6. As, at the same time, I That's am- That's twist of dread. I need athletics checks. I am going to try to- Natural uh, one. Oofed up. And so the twist of dread has, has I stumble, seen itself. my sickly form falling on you the ground. You slip on some of the on some of the blood that Marius had spilled onto the fleshy floor <clears throat> beneath you as he swats you away easily uh, and begins to step forward. Marius, you feel your your boots sink into the bloody liquid in this in this cavity that the the uh, monolith resides within. And you can feel, you can feel this entity drawing you closer. Yes. You are giving her what she wants. Oh, oh, yes. As you all watch, as Maria steps into the liquid, the warmth sinking into oh. your boots, you shovel some more of the blood it's into your so into long. your mouth. You can see the veins on his neck throbbing mm. with every gulp of blood that he downs. As he begins to be encircled by roots, toothy roots, almost creating a tomb around you, Marius. And the room fills with amber light. You hear the words from inside of this amber sarcophagi. Yes, come to me. I can't do it. This is it's so hard. Uh, and she tells you to come closer to her and you begin to move and try as the, as the, um, as the roots pull you towards and to the amber monolith and begin to encircle all around you. And Does as start the, moving? the roots pull him close, How he is now is face he? to chest to monolith with this thing. As the roots writhe around you and begin to encircle the monolith, you can see the dark black shape of Kellen, the, of the crooked teeth, getting larger and larger and larger within this monolith. As all of a sudden, the amber light goes dark. And emanating from you, Marius, is a blood red light. Oh, Not the blood red of your god. Oh no. But of a I'm blood forsaken. red velvet. <gasps> As you hear, all of you. I'm gonna have to try and remember how to do this. Someone do a Russian accent for me. Or, uh, you My name is Oyuse, a Russian I guy. I have 12 mitch <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm from Cheyenne, Marius, Wyoming. Cheyenne, tell me. Marius, you, you are full if you think that I would let you succumb to someone so easily. No. No, my no. sweet love. No, it cannot be. You are mine. No. And mine alone. You don't take me into lands further away and expect no. to throw me away like trash. I will have you. All of you. And as you <gasps> emanate with no, the light, not. The red, almost blood red light of the Duchess of Sin herself, the amber of the monolith cracks. You hear a howling yell of pain from Kellen of the Crooked Teeth as she is unable to fully attach herself to you, protected, almost damned by the Duchess of Sin herself, not allowing anyone else in. The room once again begins to fill with that amber light as she yells out, I've been tricked. No! And all of a sudden the blood begins to boil and roil and pop as teeth begin to spit out and shoot towards you. I need you all to roll dexterity saving throws. Oh my god. Uh, I get to uh, if I two. can, I would try to reach Boy, get out of there. Marius, are you all right? No, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I got a natural one. Oh my god, I did two. I'm taking teeth damage. Wow. Uh, I guess I'm rolling this guy. No, I'm taking teeth damage. I got a 22. Anyone who rolls less than a 10 is going to take three points of, um, of piercing damage. Easy. As the teeth begin to fly up out of the gummy substance and shoot towards you, I you would watch. reach forward and pull Marius back towards out of the. Is he puddle. reachable? Uh, roll a contest against Kellen. I'm also pretty good. Yeah, all right. I mean, hey, whatever you want to do. He's waiting to die. 
Yeah, that's uh. You you reach out to try and grab onto him, but the 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 uh the roots around are squeezing him tightly. You are not strong enough to pull Marius away as the roots even more begin to rise up out of the gummy flesh and move towards you. I need you all to roll for initiative. Oh! Oh, which die to use? Which die to use? I guess I'm rolling this one. Here, 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 here. Nah, not terrible. terrible. By that, I mean pretty terrible. Okay, it's gonna be better. We're going to use Monsters 1 for this. 2025. <laughs> uh, 15 to 20. 17. 18. Hey, there you go. Okay. You rolled for Lethica? I did. Thank you. Uh, so we've got Jericho, Briggsy, Monsters 1. Uh, 10, 15. 13. I got it. 13. Oh, I'm just 10. kidding. You, you, go, no, go you two go first, first because I do not want to go back to that. And Paris. then out of the two of Okay. Boom. 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 Your grandma so and then I'll uh, <laughs> get you out of there. Have you heard about our Lord and Savior, Shar? The, the room itself begins, begins to shake and move. You see the walls all made of this disgusting, fleshy substance begin to pop with these almost abscesses as blood and pus begin to spill around. Uh, you see teeth begin to bubble up out of pools of blood, some rotten, some fully formed. As Marius, you can feel the pain that this entity is in. Something that should not happen has. You were willing to give yourself over to this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you're fucked. The Duchess of Sin would not let it be. Oh, Duchess. Confirming something that you have been worried about for a long time. That part of her resides within you, and that you carried her with you always, marked by her as she would will it. Oh, oh, oh. Helen was not prepared for whatever this was, and the crack in the amber shows it. As she writhes in pain, you feel the tendrils that are wrapping around you slacken a little bit. And that mental hold she had had on you has vanished. As you feel that lust, both sexual and bloodlust, leave from you. Your dampier, abil- not dampier abilities, but your, damp- your dampier facial features slowly residing back into the Marius that everyone knew. Wargrim, you feel the same. That mental nagging at the back of your head slowly fades away and all that you can hear your minds are racked by the screams of pain of this entity as whatever happened whatever the duchess of sin has done to this entity in amber was exactly the opposite of what she was hoping for as you feel the house above you begin to move the ground above you begin to move your room In your hand, you feel the book, the journal of Petrini Mm. begin to vibrate. (laughs) It falls to the ground, blood splattering everywhere Mm. as it opens and begins to flip and flip to the most recent page you have been reading. And there upon it, words begin to appear. What was the most recent? Just, just look for a page. It will be in order. I the latest page. Dungeon Master. What do you want? <laughs> I look at the crack of the amber monolith. Does it look like, even though she's like pissed, is it like anything like coming out of it? No. Okay. Yeah, we were there. We read oh, that. Dungeon shit, it's this one. That's got to be oh, this one. How do you spell shit. Kellen again? Oh, do you no, want do the either? actual? No, we did Do you want okay. the actual spelling or how okay. I've been spelling it so I don't call her Caitlin? The actual spelling. The actual spelling. Oh, fuck. I don't even have that written down right here. Is it a K or a C? It's a C. Is it the K- one that was in chat? I might have oh, from my yeah. Curse of Straub notes. I might have it. I uh, think... Who put it in chat? I think it was C- 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 It was C I. Yeah, yes, that's it. C I T H L E N. Thank you, Helen. It's pronounced Kellen? Yeah, it's pronounced Kellen. K 
It's Kellen. Kellen of the Crooked Teeth. And if I spelled it that way, I would always pronounce it Kethlin. Uh, so as, just shut up. <laughs> as your wits begin to return to you, you feel the book shake as it lands oh, on the ground oh. and opens itself to a new page. You begin to see the writing appear on the page of the book. House wakes. Come. Parlor. Now! I'll tell you this was a trick! I'm gonna start shooting at the- I'm gonna take my, my blunderbuss and start shooting Eldritch Blast at the, uh, Roll at the model. Attack. I mean, and while, while backing up and running the fuck away. Uh, am I able to run away? Or am I stuck? We'll See, find out the... on your turn. Ah, shit. We'll oh, find out next wow, time on okay. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Uh, that is a, a 23. Okay. That just hits, off. roll damage. It's just a d10. Do I have any d10s in my coffin of dice? Uh, sorry, Paul. Wow, do I have any? Here we go, here's one. That's brilliant. Hey, big money. Of damage, of course, damage. You, you back up looking at this thing that is... For all intents and purposes, it almost appears to be consuming Narius, but you are able, between the tendrils of the of the bloody tooth and roots, yeah, you're able to find pieces of amber um, in an area where you see that it's splintered. You let loose a blast of um, of magic from your blunderbuss, and it see, it appears to do some damage as you watch a bit of a bit of amber splinter away and embed itself in a bit of the uh, of the gummy flesh of the walls. So look like it took damage. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I would stop to like destroy it. I would just. I heard your grim. I'm gonna just turn tail. Okay. I mean, I know we have initiative, but no. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it wasn't actually your turn. Sorry. Oh. Anyway. So you you won't get your <laughs> turn. Do that on your turn. I'll, I'll look around and I'll say, "Well, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about this, Miss Lady, uh, but you have my 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 newest and bestest friends, Sir Marius, and so get him, Virgil, and let out a big old squawk, and Virgil will fly over the demonic taste. crow and let out a horrifying shriek, and I'm gonna cast Shatter on the Amber Monolith. Uh, let it rip. All right, because I've seen go. that it does damage. As I'm just gonna try to book it, as I keep an eye on Marius." So, um, I don't know if this is gonna work, but, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna cast Shatter. What's the worst thing? Uh, it's a, it's a con saving throw, DC 15. I'm gonna choose to fail. Oh! Oh! Okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. There's no way that's what, a bad thing. What does Shatter uh, do, perchance? Is it oh, unleashed dark? If it's no, inorganic it's materials it's such as yeah. stone, crystal, and metal, it has a disadvantage. <laughs> well, on the I same. rolled a natural three, but I'll see if I can get a one. I didn't, so okay. it's a three. Okay, yes. I rolled low on damage. <laughs> uh, oof. It's a, oof. Uh, it's a, a six, a nine, po- nine points of thunder damage. That's it. You you watch as uh, as Virgil begins to circle this thing and lets out a large, uh, or a loud, almost um, ungodly squawk. All of you, how, does it affect Oh, uh, I know, I would cast it away. It's, it's a relatively small radius. It's like but, a- but Marius is literally attached to this thing. <laughs> so yes, I, I would rule that you, because you were attached to this thing, it would have to affect you. Con saving throw, 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 throw 15. Oh, oh okay. obliterated. So you take four, four points. You uh, take four points of thunder damage. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, and you're not deaf. You you feel. <laughs> wow. I don't think. Wait, there. Uh, oh, that was wow. No, no, it's just wow. damage. Never mind. Sorry. You feel um you feel the amber monolith that you are attached to begin to vibrate, and you can hear the sound of it cracking. It sounds it sounds like the sound that a tooth makes when it's being ripped from bone. Oh, oh I heard that. Nikki. I actually heard that. <laughs> yeah, me too. As, uh, as cracks begin to form along this thing, and at first, you had heard the sounds of screaming and pain and anger, but now you hear the sound of a joyous laughter as the room erupts in roots. Briggsy. That was your turn. Where That's what you I do, and I run all the way back, sixty feet or thirty feet, <laughs> and say, get, uh, "I'm getting the fuck out of here." Say, I'm gonna I'm, make yeah. like a leaf and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> okay. make oh, I just dropped someone. Don't, don't, don't leave, leave. Jorgen, Don't leave without Sir Marius. Thank you. 
Um, Not you, again. And that was your turn, yes. Yep. So I need all of you, um, as it is now a turn for something, I need all of you to make a constitution saving throw for me, please. Mind if I do? I'm going to just... <laughs> oh, let's go. What? Not bad. A DC is 19. 13. So I succeed let, for let once. Let me know if you get 13 let's go. or 12 succeed. or more. I got a 13 exactly. I rolled a 13. I'm good. I didn't. Okay. Just 23. Farin. Just Farron fails. Thank goodness he does. You are going to take. Oh, sorry. Woo! Well, that one's gone. <laughs> oh, you're dead. Butter fingers. You are going to take Water seven free. points of necrotic damage and one level of exhaustion. <gasps> as the roots <laughs> whip out at you, and you are you are entangled by these things as they pull you down and into into the flesh. Of, of the gums from whence they came, you feel the toothy blood fill your mouth. What? Did you say third, seven? Seven. Whew! Uh, did you say toothy blood? <laughs> I did say toothy Imagine blood. Imagine filling a con oh. saving throw. All I did was drink amber water blood. Amber I, water. Oh. I mean, come on, you I fool. now have three you levels. Our donkey. exhaustion from before would not have cleared at this point, correct? No. I am quite tired. Oh, nice. <laughs> Do we have to lay down and take him in? Uh, from the, 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 mm-hmm. the weasel poison. From the, she I love exhaustion? weasel poison. Uh, you, yours was cured, I believe. You, you, you passed your saves. The, you I think she failed saves. a couple saves. Oh, oh you're no. fucked. Was the exhaustion caused by the poison? It was, so it was the weasel bite. But was it was that because I did lesser restoration? So would that have cleared you have it? Oh it yes, one. you would have. Okay, it. so, so you I am did back one, at one lesser restoration. Where did you do two? I oh. think you only did one because you did one on you and you did it one lowers, on it by one. But, oh, okay, so then I will be at two. Oh, Lathander cured. Lathander cured me. Yeah. So yeah, you might have been at one. So you're probably at two now. I probably gave you. Two I four. got the touch. <laughs> Lathander. Exactly. Thank you see you know. Yeah. Well. Um, and so yes, yeah, that. That is what you feel as you um, you are not prone. You're able to get back up, but you are now covered in toothy blood, and you have wounds from where the teeth are biting into you that are attached to these roots uh, as they flail and move towards you. Uh, Lethica, uh, for the sake of Derek not being here, he gets really lucky. Just uh, move him towards the edge. Did, oh, I did didn't you take your turn. Yet. No, I did not. Oh. Yet. Um, oh, Farron's first, yeah. Yeah, I would get up and be kind of shaken and try to brush the teeth off of me. Um, and I... Oh, gosh. I don't want to leave Marius, but I think I would run. I would <laughs> <laughs> I would run. I feel like you probably would, too. Five, ten. Well, you would have been, like, more here, right? Because you're trying to grab him, so you're probably closer okay, to yeah. that. Yeah. Five, ten, fifteen. My speed is halved currently, um, and I would. So, if you're using your action to uh, sprint, sprint, you would get your full movement uh, because your speed is halved. And you get some kind of like Seder dash or anything. Oh, do I? Is that a thing? That seems like it should. I I think that's centaur. I have a jumping thing, but not a running thing. Yeah, I have mirthful leaps. (laughs) What does that do? Actually, you might be able to go further. It's for jumping. Uh, Well, I mean, you could. I love prancer sizing. I can long or high jump, but so it means that you basically. I've never seen the point of jumping rather than running. Well, it depends if that does, doesn't take so into no, account. Yeah, yeah, one over it again. adds, it basically increases your movement. So you can jump and then make an additional D8. So you can go further by jumping around than... <laughs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> Mirthful. I'm as nimble as a forest creature. <laughs> you yeah. me cry. Don't do that. Uh, and as I'm running, uh, I don't know. No, I don't, I've got nothing. <laughs> so, so how far do you move? Uh, 30 feet, right? 30 feet. Okay, perfect. Uh, Lethica. Uh, I will, I'm not gonna look <laughs> She's gonna look around concerned, say something, uh, dark uh concerning, dark and dreary, but like helpful about Char. This uh, is what you get from Benjamin Saluna. Saluna, be damned. <laughs> <laughs> Saluna, be damned. <laughs> Five, uh, Saluna, be damned. <laughs> Oh, my dice! Um, and that is going to be her turn. And I, oh, actually, I am going to. How long does Bless last? One minute. Ten minutes. No. Until I get one, minute, one minute. One minute. 
Wow, really? Uh, yeah. No, yeah, that's, concentration that's, of one minute. That's uh, that's what I got. Okay. Do you bless? No, 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 no. Oh. Your gun. Uh, ah! all right. Uh, I was, <laughs> what's so is he? How far out is he from me right now? Am I on like the shoreline and he's like? I would, I would say for the, for the sake of this, he's about ten feet from you. Oh, okay. fine. But you uh, have to wade in to get to me. Unless you've got reach. <clears throat> you ain't no bugbear. Uh, I would, I would say, no dark monster will claim any more friends of mine. Uh, and I would take my lantern, uh, and, uh, take my shovel and fasten it to the end of it. Uh, and as mist begins to pour off of it, uh, I would have specters of my ancestors rise around me. Uh, and I would wade in and, and try and get to him. Damn! And if, he's, if he's wrapped up in horrible toothy vines, uh, I'd like to make an attack against him and try and free him. One attack? Ugh, you're such a uh, hero. I don't deserve you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very flawed. <laughs> uh, That's fun, though. I would, well, is it, oh, actually, hang on. Let's do melee damage. Um, 14? Up oh, 14? Yeah, that hits. Oh, okay. yeah, let's go, All baby. Right. Well, 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 okay. I also want to um, say I like the sharp edges of your dice. Right? Like that. Yeah. Nice. Well, it's the sharp edge of my shell is going to free you from hell, so. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> okay. All right. I get down with that. I get down with that. All right. Okay. <laughs> 16 points. Of righteous shovel damage. Wow, that's yeah. a lot of righteous shovel damage. That's the most righteous shovel damage I've ever seen in a oh, game. In all of Avengers. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen 16 points of righteous shovel damage. Well, you know, anywhere. somebody's got to do it at some point in time. You take your shovel and blindly jam it down into the bubbling, bloody pool that you stand within. Release him! You sever four of these. Ten, these wriggling mass of tendrils that are encircling Marius, and you see your friend within, your new friend within, and you have opened a way for him to be able to exit this oh Rudy tomb. Is it, would Rudy I tomb? be able to? I don't know, like <laughs> mechanically, if this is even possible, but can I potentially like, like grab him and like try and throw him? To, however, you, you, know. you can't because that would take your action. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, yeah, 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 that's that's. But you still have movement if you'd like yeah. to then also run away now that you yes. freed me. No, <laughs> I'm like, trying. Just like, I would hold open the. I would Jesus. like hold open the Rudy tooth. Oh, Lord. You do that. The horrible Rudy tooth thing. Rudy and just toothy, point toothy, and try and just. I hope that the maiden can possibly protect me from whatever horrible thing is happening. Marius, you are shrouded in darkness. The no. words no. of the Countess ringing in your ears. That lust, that feeling of lust, bloodlust, finally gone from you. As you begin to see light. And at first, it feels like the shining, warm light of Lathander shining upon you. But it is not. Lathander is not here, at least not now. As you watch as some of the wriggling tentacles fall in front of your face as Yorgrim stands before you. As he reaches out and pries open this rooty tomb. I just love to and you are able to see the amber light in all of this this cavern in front of you, your friends running towards the edges, towards that long ascent up towards the the base of the house. And you could easily make your way towards them. What do you do? Um I would uh while this Rudy Tombsday. <laughs> while all this good old Rudy Rudy Tooth Tombsday is uh God. I can't even focus. Ugh. While all of this is going on, uh, I would, uh, I, I, as I'm, I'm wrapped up in this tomb, I would think, no, no, I was so close, but she's found me even here. How can this be? Ah. And then I would see Jorgrim saving me as I fall out of this uh, rudy toothy tomb into the puddle. And I would stand up and seeing my friends uh, or seeing the rest of the group 
uh, run uh, back from whence we came, I would I would stand up and turn to Yorgrim and say, "Thank you. I I owe you everything. I am irredeemable." And I would cast Shield of Faith on my good friend. You owe me uh, nothing. As a bonus action, um, and you would be you would be uh, all of a sudden. Over your skin, there would be a a, 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 a film of, of rose and gold light. And uh, for the duration of this concentration, which is 10 minutes, you have uh, plus two bonus to AC. Um, and I would say to you, we must retreat. For now, we must retreat. And I would begin to, to, to make my way towards this uh, exit. Okay. I'll be right behind you, boy. You have your full movement to do that. I don't because have much. You are not so I think this is. I think you're oh, right I have here. Thirty-five. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, so, so then you have, you have thirty-five. Yeah. Perfect. Good. And I would be. You'd be shielded, and I would be urging you to retreat. Jericho. Oh, uh, I. I guess Virgil would still be back there. Uh, I would like to um, uh, have Virgil go to Yorgrim and basically kind of sit on his shoulder and like help, basically use the assist action. To use Virgil the to assist the help action, yes, not the help action. Uh, as you'll see, this weird uh, uh, evil pro uh, uh, tr- uh, try to like he, he's gonna grab your uh, house of nightmares, <laughs> your uh, your your uh, your robes, and just kind of pull you as he flaps. Uh, tries to pull you out of the muck, and I will uh, look at everything. I don't think I have anything that I can do here, and I'll say. Uh, well, I guess there's no way to go but up, and I don't got nothing that's gonna, that's really gonna help us. But, but I guess we'll just we just gotta get to climbing. And I'm gonna try to find the best possible way and um, use my action to cast um, dancing lights. Oh. Uh, and I know I saw them got get swallowed <laughs> before. If there's any chance that anything has changed, I'm still gonna try it. Use my action to do it as kind of mm-hmm. these. Pumpkin like jack o' lanterns will be will be appearing in the four swirling biz as I'm going to try to cast it upwards and just find a place to climb. Um, I will say that with the assistance of your lights, with the amber monolith now being cracked, and you can hear it, the sound of what what sounds like teeth being pulled from bone as this monolith continues to crack under the stress of whatever has happened here, you are actually able to see that magical darkness that shrouded the uh, the long drop down appears to be no longer in effect. It is just darkness. As your pumpkins begin to spin and illuminate that tall sh- circular cylindrical shaft that leads up towards the base of the house. Um, and so it would give you light, but you look like you will need to climb. So I am going to need you to make a, uh, in athletics or acrobatics check for me Ooh. to see how successful you are climbing out. Okay, and then I'll look back and I'll see as uh, Marius is probably stumbling towards, covered in the blood, and then I'll say, is your room okay? I'm sorry if I did this. Ugh, acrobatics? Well, that'll be an eight. You begin to climb up, you look back towards your friends and you're shocked to see this room in its horror the bubbling blood, the teeth flying this way and that, Yorgrim holding open the toothy uh, tendrils of this uh, of this entity, and you reach up, but you find that at the very base of this, it is it has now succumbed to that same fleshy gum-like substance. And as you reach your hand in, you pop what appears to be a bloody abscess, and you slip on the um, on the slimy liquid that spills forth. And you are um, you are now prone at the base of this thing. Oh gosh! Uh, let me just put a little, a little token on me. Well, uh, beside me, over there. Briggsy. Um. How, wait. So can we see up to the top? You can't see towards the very top, but the uh, but it is illuminated uh, for the most part. Okay. I would just use my action to sprint, and I would just go over here and try to climb um, as high as I can. Okay, I need you to roll in athletics and acrobatics. Check for me, please. Not nice. bad. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. B- 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 
skills. I think I'm good at one of those. No, I'm not. Uh, that is 817. <laughs> you are oh, easily God. able to bad. latch yourself on to this, um, to this uh, fleshy wall oh. as you begin to climb. And you are able to make your full oh. movement uh, to where you need to be, and we will stop there. Okay. So, yep, sounds good. Uh, Monsters 1, I need everybody who is still in the base of this to oh. roll a constitution saving throw. Yorgrim, you are at disadvantage because you are in contact with this thing. So everyone but oh, Riggs. So everyone but oh, Riggs. Oh, okay. So not everybody but like, like, like anyone touching the ground. Hmm? Yes. Okay. Constitution? Oof, that's not good. Constitution. Yeah. Man, I'm rolling like ass. 13. I got a 10. Ah, oh, jeez. 19. I'm rolling like butt cheeks. Uh, anyone with a 13 or with a 12 or below? Oh, yeah, me. All right. The two of you are going to take a level of exhaustion. Uh, let, can we twist? Can we twist fair? Don't you have, a, uh, don't you have inspiration? Spark inspiration? Yeah, your inspiration lasts for 10 minutes. Motherfucker. It's a if, six. Are you close? It's a D6. Yeah, I'm very close. Yeah. No, she's then, had it. Then yeah, let yeah, it rip. Yeah, yeah, let it rip. Let it rip. You didn't use it because uh, you got a natural. You beat it without. Con, it is. 14. Oh. I'll take that one. Oh, I thought that was a one use. So um, you will take five <laughs> points of necrotic damage and one level of exhaustion, Marius. All right. As you feel these roots sink into your flesh and begin to oh, chew I at you, sucking forth your life force. Left as you, fine. I'm sorry, left this fine. As you hear in your head, I will have your teeth. Oh, no, thank you. Um, and that is Masters One's turn. Farron. Let's see. You'll have nothing of mine. Um, and I'm going to... I don't actually know how jumping works, because... So... Do Let's you know Google how? it. Because it's, it's one of the most... Uh, Fun I think it's a move. Hey, like Monska, ten... help us with jumping rules. Yeah. Yeah. Zizi, 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 help us with jumping rules. How to jump? It's, it's based weird. on strength, though, isn't it? Like, but I weirdly. think that satyrs don't need to get a running start, right? Mm. When you make a long jump, yes. you cover a number of feet up to your strength score if you move at least 10 feet on foot immediately before the jump. Uh, when you make a standing long jump, you can only leave half that distance. Either way, each foot you clear of the jump costs a foot of movement. Look, but look at your special, look at your special jump, it's though. So, I half. can add a D8 to that, and I don't I have to do the running start. I can do a standing jump. Okay, so you can literally just jump your strength score. So what's your Plus strength D8. score? Plus D8. Two or something? No, no, it's three. No. Not the bonus, One. but the total No, no, it's 12. It's 12. It's 12. Oh. So it's 12. Oh. So it'll be 6 so plus 1d8. 1d8. So roll a d8. If you want to. We'll see if What's you want to. One. Yeah, like that, I don't see how that's a scenario. Like, so you can jump. Well, it's just free feet. movement, right? Is that the idea? No, it's not free. No, so it takes up movement. That's why I never understood the point of jumping. It's dumb. It's so bad. I'm it's not sure, like, what if you're at the end of your movement and then you jump? Do you get extra movement or do you just stop? That's what I would assume is you get, like, you propel yourself. So if I were to run, I'm just going to. This <laughs> just, is just run. Just run. Just run. Just run. Just run. I'm going to add that to the list of things I would change in 5e. Um, we're going to make our own 5e. Exactly. With black, 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 and hookers. <laughs> Uh, so my speed is still halved to 15, so I would just go one, two, and then I guess... Sprint. Yeah, and then try to climb up the wall. All right, I need you to roll an athletics acrobatic. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 14. Uh, yeah, 14. You are able to find purchase on this fleshy wall as you begin to climb up with all the strength that you have and you are able to meet Briggsy near the top. The dancing lights, the floating jack-o'-lanterns from Jericho's magic did not illuminate the space. But before you, in that, in that walled off space that you had climbed into, the ruins of something that this house had been built on, you hear the soft thud of footsteps, the soft pacing of something just before you as you hear the sound of the popping of blood and the gnashing of teeth coming, emanating from where you had just come from. And 
Do you wait for your friends? I'm going to give now the two of you together. Are you going to wait at the top of this for everyone to get there before moving forward? Uh, I wouldn't. No, absolutely not. <laughs> but he's gonna be in I'm the gonna watch him like see it in the bar like yeah. I'm at the table. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna stand there and, and look and like look between him crocktailing it out and okay. And that's where we'll leave that athletic like Crocktailing. Yeah. Uh she's just gonna attempt to climb up. Uh athletics acrobatics. Uh oh she crushes it. It's like a, a twenty two. Uh, yeah, she easily is able to find purchase, and she and she'll uh, wait for she climbs for, up, and she'll, she'll she gets there just as Briggsy is heaving yep. himself over and running into the foundation of this house. Yep. Uh, Yorgrim. Uh, what is there anything happening to me right now? I'm just like yeah. free and clear. I can't actually see. You've extra AC just in case. I can, I can yeah. just move you. Uh, so when you're, you're um, here. Um, yeah, I would I'm attempt like to move Dickens. out of the like the, wind, the pool three, of blood, and then four, five, get to the shoreline. And well, I don't, I don't know. I'm about thirty. Yeah, thirty. Four, yeah. five, and then six. Yep, yeah. you can go right here. So it would be sixty if you use your full move. Yes. Or if you if use you your action to sprint. Yeah, which you should do. Um, I don't. Well, I don't. Is that Marius right there? Yeah. I don't know that I'd like. I'm going right at. But go ahead, do right. what you want to do. Yeah, all right, I can't. <laughs> I need you to roll an athletics acrobatics for me, please. Uh, okay. See, there you go, my matter. Uh-oh. Well, I should have left him. I, you know, it was punishment. Uh, yes. Athletics has got to be pretty good. Yeah, you probably got like a nine. Eight? <laughs> oh. You. Nice. Oh. No. You no. reach in, but the weight of you is too much as the flesh on this wall gives way and peels back, exposing um, teeth buried deep within. Oh. As you fall oh. backwards onto the ground. I don't like this um, anymore. <laughs> and you are. That is where you're at. You are on the ground. You are not able to make your way up. The weight of my sins. <laughs> <laughs> not this tombstone. <laughs> Certainly, I can just take off. Marion. Uh, I'm just going to move 60 feet. <laughs> 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, but then, oh Athletics shit. Athletics, acrobatics, okay. please. Um, I'm, I am able to just walk up walls. Athletics, acrobatics. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a 24. Easily, you are able to reach in. Your nails still still elongated from your time overcome by bloodlust as your uh, dampiric self came to the forefront. As you are able to dig into the flesh, the aroma of of metal, of blood assailing your nostrils as you scale the wall of this thing, and you are able to reach uh, the rest of your group. I'm out of here. Briggsy disappears uh, through the doorway. Can we flavor it like you have to do this, like like Dracula style? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll, do it, I'll do that the whole time. <laughs> 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 I'm on my back. I'm glad you're okay, Sir Marius. Oh. Jericho, you oh. are you are still on the ground. Uh, you are prone. I need you to roll a Constitution saving throw, please. Oh gosh. Oh, that's pretty good. Con, you say seventeen? Yes. Uh, as the tendrils whip up and try and pull you deeper into the fleshy floor, you are able to smack them away, and you are you have access to your turn. Uh, I'll say, come on, Virgil, help out Mr. Yorgrim. Oh, you're with him. Let's help Mr. Yorgrim out. And I'm going to just try to climb up. Uh, Athletics, acrobatics, yep, please. Yep, 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 yep. Ooh. Uh, um, acrobatics, you say? That'll be 20. You are easily Pretty able to climb up. Oh, it seems that the, uh, the dexterity and grace which with, with which Marius climbed up, he almost left footholds and handholds for you to follow up after uh, as you quickly scramble up behind him. Uh, Briggsy, you... Did you want to say something? No, no, no. I, just want to <laughs> I was going to say, what do I see? He's preparing for In the parlor at the table. <laughs> In the parlor. <laughs> what do I see at the parlor? You make your way into what had been and still is the foundation of the Perkin House. Oh. Your new home. Do you, would you normally have dark vision? Yes. 
right? Reborn? Uh, I believe reborn, so. Yes. I think reborn is you, up. you walk into this space and you wait for your eyes to adjust to the darkness. But the adjustment never comes. As this room remains pitch black to you, you feel along the walls, but, and you feel the cold stone as you hear the very soft patter of feet walking back and forth, back and forth, almost dragging their weight. And as you enter, it almost feels silent compared to what you'd been experiencing below, though the sound emanates up and echoes into the space, the eerie sound, the patter of these, to you, disembodied feet is all that assails your senses as they get closer and closer and closer. And then you feel it, cold breath on your neck. <laughs> you can tell that there is a form there next to you as it breathes you in and you hear the words, you'll be crooked too. Oh, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, in a flash, in a flash of neon, like, magenta light, I flash 30 feet away, and then I sprint 60 more feet as far as I can. Uh... Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck! Uh, so I'm Misty step as my yeah. bonus action and yeah. then sprinting with my action. To where? Oh, uh, where are you going? Further into, the, further into the house. Into the wine cellar and up the stairs. You, I could. you do that. You And as you do this, you, you flip around and you see for a second the form of the crooked man as he stands there with his eerie smile, his mouth um, completely empty of teeth as blood spills out and down the front of him. His head cocked to the left side, his um, his hat un- uncannily able to stay atop his head as he just smiles as you, as you find yourself knee-deep in wine. Warm wine. I need everyone that is down below. Yes. To Just roll Mr. Your a Constitution fuckers. saving throw. Are you? Is, yes, you're fine. Is the help? What, what does the help action do? Is that also saving throws or no? I, I, I don't know. It gives you advantage on some bullshit. I think it's attack rolls and ability checks. Okay. Attack on the things things I'd change about five e. <laughs> uh, I've rolled an eighteen. Oh, let's go. Oh yeah, you are you are able to shake off the tendrils as oh. they try and latch onto you. Uh, roll a perception check for me. Well, I'm not very perceptive. If that's the question. <laughs> Is it a ten or more? Oh uh, well, no, it's not. Oh, then no. you you reach <laughs> up no. and latch on to the parts of this wall, and you can see where uh, bits of it have fallen away, and there's tooth-like substance embedded deep into this structure, and you find those hard pieces of stone and tooth, and you're able to use them to propel yourself upward as you re- as you find yourself with the group. Oh, this is so gross. <laughs> Virgil's like on your and back, for, pulling it. <laughs> and for the sake of what will happen now, we're going to keep this initiative as it will be relevant, but That's initiative good. has dropped for the moment. Uh, we are right. Um so we've all made it to the top. I was a Russian pirate from Ireland. So <laughs> we have gone on a world journey, journey today. Almost <laughs> dub of the morning of that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh, dub of the morning, comrade. Comrade. Do we've all comrade made it to the top. Over. Yes, and you, except uh, Briggsy, you, who is gone. You see everyone except for right. Yorgrim. That's where we were next. Yeah. <laughs> everyone except <laughs> everyone except for Yorgrim sees a flash of Briggsy's magic as he as he yells out and you see, I would say, in the um, in the the arch that leads into the foundation, you're able to see a form for just a second, but not long enough to see what it is. That there was something in there. Where 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 is she headed? Where's she going? As you begin to hear again the movement and the dragging of feet, and nothing more. What's happening up here? Are you okay? I'm fine. Where is where's he going? We need to keep up. Sir Marius, you're not looking too good. You got a little Jericho focus. Where is he going? Oh, I think I think I think he's just a feared, Mr. Mr. Sir Marius. 
He's just a feared. He's a scaredy croc. He said it to the pup. Thank you, and I storm off because I, I didn't hear this when the fucking thing happens, and I chase after no, I where I saw this well magic go. And the initiative was rolled. I am uh, I am drenched in in blood and sweat, uh, and I am just go- I chase. It starts to fill up the room. Shut up! Without hesitation, I would chase after where I saw Briggsy dissipate. To. All right, you immediately run in and you wait for your eyes to adjust as you're so used to them doing, but the light never comes as you hear the slow movement of the feet on the ground. And then you feel a cold breath on your neck and the words, you will be crooked too. I would draw my sword and, and, and slash it where I hear this. this. I need your roll wisdom saving throw for me, please. Oof the fuck this die. I'm glad I got the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you would have had to roll it too if you hadn't escaped. That's going to be yep. a failure, my friend. Yep. I fail. What is the roll? Uh, probably a five. Let me <sighs> double check here. Oh, should we twist it? <laughs> oh, it's a six. Twist it, twist it. Hey, thank you for the twist. Ah! ah. <laughs> oh, much better. I got a... 23. Thank okay. you, Molly. The uh, fresh you, one's always worth You were yeah. able to <laughs> shake off whatever um, what is, whatever begins to overcome you as mm. you do what? Continue to chase after Breezy. Well, I had just slashed it where I thought yeah. it I was. I would say roll an intelligent... No, roll a survival check to see at disadvantage because it's pitch black to see if you'd have any idea where Briggsy went. <laughs> So close to being just so good. Uh, survival? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm lost in the darkness. Uh, seven. You, Briggsy's magic allowed him to essentially teleport from one space to the next. And in this darkness, you are unable to tell whether he's in the corner of his room, whether he went to some place further up in the house. It is just you and whatever this creature is and your friends in the other room. Do I have any idea where the parlor is, or am I completely you, lost in blackness? You know what room this is, just without Jericho and Lethica ah. with you, holding... You traveled through the space before with the right. Of light. Right. You don't have light now. The light is in the other room. All right, then I would just be trying to fumble-stumble my <laughs> way to the parlor. Okay. Failingly. Let's all stick together! I will say you are you are able to reach the um, the archway that leads into that that stone area where uh, where the cask, the wine cask had been. Uh, and you're able to feel as you put your hand there to begin to climb through that the wine that had been a shallow layer on the floor has now reached about waist height and it is warm. Whoa. And it hits your senses immediately. This is not wine. This is blood. <sighs> Okay, I guess that's my whole turn. <laughs> Who's the GM would like to torment? Who wants to do anything else? I I would like to say no. Let's let's get Sir Marius. Let's stick together, Briggsy. We're there's the house is awake and we need to get to the parlor, but we're all falling over each other on the teeth and ourselves. Let's try to be reasonable type folk. And I will then try to like just gather like like let's all go together and proceed cautiously. I think you're right. I'll reach for his hand, and we should form a chain and all go together. I'll make sure she doesn't follow or send anything after us. Put my banjo on on my back, and and let's go. I'd say towards, like, the end of it. Well, I guess I'd be the last one up anyway, but I'd say towards the end. Per usual. Per usual. Um, I'll go last. Um, You make your way into the... Do you have your dancing lights? Yeah, yeah, I'm, br- I'm bringing the, the, the come on, pumpkins, as dance you get, for me. As you get to the edge, you feel your back illuminate, Marius, and you can now see in this room that had been dark previously as Jericho, Farron, Gorgrim, and Lethica enter in from the the world below. And as you do, you, you see standing in the very center of this room, shuffling back and forth, his head cocked to one side. The crooked man looks at all of you. And I need everyone else to roll a wisdom saving throw for me, please. Oh, gosh. I think we got a... Okay, that's pretty good. Oh, come on, okay, baby. Okay, that's nope. pretty good. That's way worse than I thought. You wisdom? already rolled, so you're fine. Oh, okay, thank yeah. God. 18. 
Lethica crushed it. And 17. 15. Oh, no. I need to get good juju in these uh, dice. 13. 13. Um, you are all able to let, uh, you are all able to resist this entity as it attempts to assail your minds. And it looks out towards you, each one of you, and landing lastly on Jericho. You know you want to be crooked. I know you do. I didn't at first either. But you know, it was real nice of my wife to kill me in my sleepwalking episode. I wouldn't have done it otherwise. She took that choice from me and I'm thankful now. Crooked's where I want to be. No, 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 thank you. No, thank you. I'm, I'm mighty fine being being upright and working on my posture. <laughs> and we'll like try to like, and I'm going to basically just try to be as like deliberate and quick and like try to skirt the room and move around. Roll a perception see. check. Okay. Wait, is this the die that I want to use? I'm sorry. I got to look to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> dice check. Dice check. Let's get a dice, dice check. check. No, that's the wrong one. Get the hell out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, Pizza see? Shit. Pizza shit. Perception, that'll be 22. You notice that as he's speaking to you, that where his mouth had been empty of teeth are now rows and rows of horrible, rotten teeth swimming in a pool of black and blood. Oh. His eyes meet yours, and he says, Now, come now. You know you want to be crooked, too. It gets lonely down here in the ruins of old bone ground. Do we all hear this? Oh, yeah. Ah, except for this mom <laughs> Well, well, I, I'm, I'm lonely all the time. It, you just get used to it. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna turn don't and listen to him, Jericho. Just keep going. No, I know, I don't want to be crooked. He I, begins I... to shuffle, and you see that in one hand he has what appears to be bricks, and in the other, what appears to be a disgusting gummy paste. Now we should all stay here together. Let's be crooked. And he slowly starts to move towards the entrance as if he is going to hold it up and force you to stay here forever. Entrance of where? Like by Between the... you and where Briggsy is. So you are currently so at the like, here. Right? So, like so you here. are currently, you have not gotten out of that circular area. You're at the very top oh, I see. portion. Uh, okay. And you're trying to exit through. There was an area where the stones had been pulled away and the wine cast had covered it. Oh, here. You're here. He is moving towards that as if he is going to um, cover it up. Okay, he's going to cover this up. I'm sorry, I got a hungry crow! And I'm just sitting for blood <laughs> <laughs> to try to eat his face and off. And unfortunately, you all succeeded, so he's not going to force any of you to become crooked. So you are easily able to move it, move into the room itself. <laughs> so like, so just does his Virgil just crash through us? So we are now so in the easily room. able to move forward ah, through ah. it. And as you do, you watch as he slowly moves up behind you. And, um, and uh, he looks at, between all of you, Briggsy, you are just standing in this pool of blood, almost in shock as it is nearly at, it's at waist height. Um, the only thing stopping it is the way it's beginning to spill over the edge of the hole that separates you and the crooked man. As he looks towards you all and he says, we're all crooked down here. And he slowly starts to close up that hole. And as he does, laying brick upon brick upon brick with almost a supernatural speed, the blood begins to rise higher and higher and higher. I like to run up the stairs as quickly as possible. <laughs> I need you to roll a uh, dexterity saving throw. You got it. And welcome, Ethan Pops Off. Hey, Ethan, Ethan. Pops Off. Oh, Thanks Ethan for popping off, off and following follow our, our channel. Popping yeah. off. Um, There's Dex exactly 31 Ooh. minutes before it's time for you all to put us at 1% volume. <laughs> Don't forget that when Grandma comes over at 10 o'clock <laughs> and you have to read her your bedtime story, that we should be at 1% volume in, an, in a different tab. <laughs> Thank you, Fresh Mars. Oh, way Fresh better, than, way like better than Stale Mercury. <laughs> that that guy sucks. New <laughs> uh, Fresh Mars, uh, you're okay. Unless Stale Mercury's in the chat, then you're okay. Oh, you're Stale <laughs> Mercury. Whoa, Stale Mercury. Just became a patron. 
Reverse, reverse <laughs> what I said before. Uh, um, Fifteen. Uh, <laughs> and what does everyone else do? For for the sake of making Shit's it easier on me, you're all you're all in the same room. You're all working together. Yeah, we're all we're all together. We're so you all catch up to me. Yes. As I'm trying to wait for this blood. Oh, it's just, it's just like a swamp. It's just like a swamp. And I'm just waiting. And as you say that, bloody. one of the casts in the corner makes a loud popping noise as the wood splinters and where wine should spill out Ugh. more burbling, thick, warm blood. We need to get out of here. Lavanda, please, please help me. I have already broken. I need help. With every step that you move, the motion of your legs causes the blood to almost whip and coagulate around you as it gets thicker and thicker, almost turning into a disgusting blood jello. Are Butter. we able to see Ew. all right? <laughs> like with with Jericho's dancing Plugins. lights, it's Plugins. not it's not an, unna- an unnatural darkness, but this is a land of nighttime, and without the light there, the rooms are dark. And you have now experienced that whatever ability you had had in Avantress in the, the world of Avantress does not seem to work here. That ability to see in the dark and shades of gray is completely gone from you. Uh, as as we catch up with Briggsy, I'll, I'll say- uh, Thinking about how I Oh gosh, Briggsy, uh, you must not have realized that we had been left behind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're on. Oh, I totally thank, did it Thank notice. goodness we were able to catch up. <laughs> Oh. Gosh, it's good to see you, my old, my dearest friend. Yeah, Lindsay. no, that's actually ketchup is exactly the substance that this blood uh, is going to take. I don't know why. We've got to get out of here. Can we get up the fucking stairs, please? Oh yeah, let's all go together. We're all, we're all. I would scramble up the stairs as fast. as Mary, are you all right? I know that this is kind of a a trigger for you. I, I'm, I'm putting two and two and four and six together. Jericho, focus. And I'm not good at math. Okay, Jericho, focus. <laughs> Virgil's always the math magician. Um, I need you to, from where you were at, I need you to make a, um, I need you to make a dexterity throw for every 15 feet of movement that you make through this blood. So okay. I would say calculate how many 15 feet of so movement everyone it would take else you to get here, out. Right? And make those rolls for me, please. It's at least three for us. <clears throat> uh, so it's three for them and probably one for me. And we need three dex checks then? Yeah. I'll roll three. Oh, uh, natty 20 and a 16, 19, and one more. Oh. Oh, yeah. another natty 20. Maybe. What? Fucking wow. killed it all of a sudden. Let me know if anyone gets a 12 or below. Killed it. Oh. oh. After all those horrible two. die rolls, I got a 20. Each fail one. Each fail one. Same. These you, are just dex checks? Would, yes. yes. Sorry. Yep. Or dex saving throws. Uh, You're advantaged, I think, right? Yeah. I beat it all normally. Oh, well, With these new viewer dies. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Chad. Yeah, yeah thanks. Really thanks, Chad. That's That's my you, thanks, Chad. Those of you that failed any of them, you find this substance really difficult to move through as the stones are slip beneath your feet. You slip and submerge yourself in this gelatinous, bloody mucus. You breathe in <laughs> and you begin. Now. Yeah. You breathe in and you begin to cough and choke as you swallow bits of this foul ichor. And you will take three points of choking you. damage. You. Oh, gosh, Virgil, why do you like the taste of this? Choking damage. But you, the flow, oh, Jay but you will Thanks. forever have the memory of the taste. Uh, oh, thank you. Virgil, why are you enjoying this? Oh. <laughs> you, you watch, you look back as in the light you see three of your friends go down and is as they come back out their head their hair spreads out around them floating on the liquid as they oh. as they reemerge covered in dark blood my my hat is like kind of coasting on top of the blood and i'll stand up and i'll grab yeah. it put it back on <laughs> Oh, I need you to laugh at that I too, feel right? paralyzed by disgusting this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's the nicest thing you could have said to me. Uh, okay, uh, I did it for uh, Lethica as well. I'm so upset. <laughs> Is everyone uh, out of the board? So now we're trying that, to catch you are, up. You are able to make your way into the landing into the kitchen. And as you do, you begin to hear the sound of crackling fire. And at first it's comforting until it begins to roar. A pink flame igniting in the oven. And then one 
and then two, and then three, as dream pastries begin to pop and spew forth from the oven around you. The oven itself coming alive with this house as it begins to shoot dream pastries all around this room. I need you all to make a a dexterity saving throw as these pastries almost seem to be alive themselves as they attach themselves and try and force themselves down your throat. That's what I'll do indeed. Oh boy. What kind of save? Sorry. Strength. Oh. Strength saving throw. Oh. Uh, Still in that little twin. Oh, nice. I can't. 15? Natural 20. 20, Uh, 21. For the sake of these, uh, let me know if you got a 12 or below. The DC's 13. Okay. I'm good. Uh, yeah, no, we both, uh, we both pass. Yep. You, Got the exact same you thing. feel as these dream pastries all attempt, it's almost as if they have somehow gained sentience as they attempt to pry your mouth open um, and enter into your, into you, but they are unable to as you bat them away and swap them away. Which, uh, which direction are you taking to try and get to the parlor? Conservatory or hallway? Oh, conservatory is bot bot, right? Yes. Well, no, no, there's a door there. Oh. But we never really explored <laughs> down here, right? That is where the uh, that, the is where the, that is where the bee ghost came Yeah, he like came, came down the hallway, but that and, was about uh, it. attached you. That's where the clock was. You'd probably not want to go where the beavers were. Yeah, well, I think I would want to go the path that I remember taking from the parlor to the kitchen, which is this Which way. would have been yeah, the conservatory. Yeah, that's reasonable. So I don't know if anyone will follow no, me this I'd way. No, I'd follow you. Um, so I would go into the conservatory. I don't know if that's a good idea, but... Well, it doesn't matter. You did it. We're yeah, going. I did I'm it. Following. Go. You make your way into the conservatory, and you slam the door behind you. You can hear the pelting of the dream pastries as they slam against the door behind you. And though you can't hear it, it's almost in your mind. You still, you still hear and can feel the sliding footsteps of the crooked man as he paces below you. And it's quiet for but a second as you begin to hear the rustling of soil. All of the plants that were in this room, the deadened plants, begin to move and rock as their roots begin to upturn from out of the soil. And beneath each one of these roots is a skull. And as they all turn and look at you, they all in unison begin to cackle. (laughs) And as they do, the bergamot tree at the very end, the one that you had eaten the forbidden fruit from, begins to slowly move and make way as the roots as the roots unfurl. And you see the skull of Petunia Lockwood, and where her eyes should be are two green bergamot fruits as she looks out at you. And she begins to laugh and laugh and laugh. I need you all to make a charisma saving throw. I swear I'm a Viking. Uh, me too. So I need to know uh, everybody's Christmas saving throws, please. Um, Anyone get below 22? 12? Is the DC 5 by chance? No. Nope, I fail. <laughs> Lethica fails as well. Okay. Lethica fails. I got a 20, 27. Well, 6? Uh, I need I need uh, Yorgrim and Lethica to each roll a d20 and tell me what you get. Uh oh. Okay. 15. I'm just scared. Oh, five. Okay. Thank you very much. That's very important. You watch as the the room around you, um, the skulls, the cacophony of cackling, as the skull of Petunia Lockwood resides at the base of this of this uh, bergamot tree, and uprising from it appears to be a spirit. You see her. You've seen her before. You saw her when she had the razor wire around her neck that she used to plummet to her death, <gasps> beheading herself in that in the very moment that she lost all semblances of life. But here, she is simply the specter of a woman whose neck has a very raw, serrated wound covered with silvery blood as she looks out at all of you. She will have. I know she will. Listening to the other spirits not going to get you far. What she wants, she will have. I've set it up to be this way. You're but another cog in the play. Run, little one, to do what you must. But the witch will have you in the end. 
And she looks out at all of you. What do you do? We have to get out of here. Continue to the parlor. Stay Agreed. in your grave. Oh, you'll see me again. Uh, She's uh, putting my body to good use. I know she is. After all, that's why I did what had to be done. May the mother in the moon shine her light favorably upon me and death. Follow Yorgum's lead. Now, I, I, I'll look and say, I normally show respect to the Lady Tabs, but I make exceptions for child murderers. And I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> and you, you... Uh, I will, uh, I will... Uh... Don't you dare go anymore, please. Can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah. Did she say the mother and the moon or the in the moon? The mother and the moon. In the moon. Okay. Mm. Uh, oh, oh, you, you're a trick. I'll know it. And I'm going to point my uh, my blunderbuss and shoot an Eldritch Blast at her to see what happens. Okay. As I, I would like you to, I would like for you to roll an attack, please. That probably misses 14. Mace, what's your AC? Do I still have? It's been a minute. Higher than 14. It's way higher than 18. That misses. You watch as you attempt to shoot at this thing. And it's almost as if your eyes are playing tricks on you as you see where it was and where it goes to as it possesses, appears to possess Yorgrim. Yorgrim, you have now been possessed by Petunia Lockwood. (laughs) You feel in your head. You immediately feel as you are overcome with cold as this thing sloops into your no, body. Not sloop. And you feel yourself almost trapped in your mind as you go to as you go to reach for your shovel to swat it away. You don't have control <sighs> over your arms, and you only you hear in the back of your mind. No, no, no! I wouldn't be going and doing a thing like that. Let mother take control as she begins to move forward in your body. We'll leave it at that. Do we notice? Do we see him like go, like? I would say you would notice like because that. you you shot at her <laughs> and so you saw the way that she moved. <laughs> and I would say you you easily saw that she entered your room. Can we tell that he's now a shambling cruncher? It's <laughs> really no difference from before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and I was like, so yeah. burn. <laughs> the dark spirit it went inside of him. He's afflicted by a ghost. Yorgrim, snap out of it! Well, that didn't work. <laughs> I'm out of ideas. Uh, I would try to keep. I would try to keep moving through the room despite this happening. You try hear her in the back of your mind. You can talk to him. I'll just be here for when you need me. And you do feel like you have some control over yourself, but she's there, ever present. Yorgrim, please, we have to get to the parlor. Petunia, Lady Petunia is inside my mind. Don't trust anything I do. Are, are you able to move of your own volition? And I would grab him and attempt to move him towards the parlor. But I don't know. It seems like maybe, but I was stunned for a moment. I can hear, uh, though. I would be I would be attempting to push you towards the parlor following Percy. I would try and walk. Towards you, the parlor. You feel like you're able to move, though that weighted presence of uh, Petunia Lockwood is still there. You know that at any moment, she could fully take control. Get out of my mind, witch! Uh, shall we bind him? Do you mind if we, like, tie you? Maybe just bind your hands. We don't have time for this. We've got to get to the parlor. The whole house is going to come down! You're right to the parlor! And I, I just hustle, and we, well, we go through... Well, Yorgrim, just don't... Just think uh, positive thoughts and positive mantras. Uh, that's what I do when Virgil tries to take control and doesn't work, but it makes me feel... You've got to be strong of will and strong of mind. You if reach... I t- Sorry, go If I turn against you, any of you, don't hesitate to strike me down. Done. It, it won't come to that. Regardless <laughs> no. of what Briggsy says, it will not come no, to that. No, we'll never count on you, Briggsy. <laughs> the <laughs> cutlass, was it? Say no more. If if there's if there's a lady in your head, maybe you can try to get some extra some some clues. That's what haunted houses have. The old pod timer place had plenty of clues. Um, okay, let's go to the parlor. As you make it towards the door, uh, Briggsy, you are in the lead. You wrench the door open. You see a fire erupt. In, in the fireplace, that warmth, that glow. Don't move yourself in just yet. Oh, God. That warmth, that oh, glow. Um, 
radiating from what you imagine to be the spirit of Petrini, as you can see clearly on the middle of the table, is the spirit board as it begins to as it begins to shake with his spiritual power. And as the door opens, Yorgrim, you reach out against your will and you slam the door shut. (gasps) No! Let me go! And every time you attempt to, every time you attempt to open the door, Yorgrim slams it shut. And you will have to roll against him to see if you're strong enough to withstand him. Go lock everybody. Um, so he is keeping us out of the parlor. Like as he's like, le- he won't let us in. Yes. Yeah, I would attempt to just. I would attempt to outstrength him. I'd like to uh, try to help. Let me just let me check my spells real quick so I don't have to smote him. Uh, you can roll with advantage because Farron's helping you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I might even just like bless myself here to just really send him to the shadow realm. Let me let me think about. Do you want me to do here. anything here, Rich, with this kid? Uh, uh, yeah. Let's oh, sure. oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah we're gonna. How wise are you, Jerry? You would assume that I'm incredibly wise. <laughs> I've said very many wise things. Okay. Um, How dare you? I'm wise first enough of all. that I spelled tendrils wrong. <laughs> uh, seeing that you won't let us into the, uh, seeing that you won't let us into the parlor, I would, my first attempt would be to, uh, I would, I would, I would look at you as you are struggling, look you deep into the eyes and say, uh. kneel and cast command. So you have to make a wisdom saving throw, uh, wisdom saving throw of 14, which is unfortunately probably plenty good. But I'm gonna hope you fail and or it makes it easier for me to fuck you. Overpower you. He feasts. Did you roll with advantage? I don't roll with oh, shit. Oh, so oh, 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 sorry. Good. You were. So then doing that. so then after having tried to cast command, I would attempt to overpower you, hoping that maybe I would throw you for a little bit of a loop. Like, hey, what's that over there? And then like open up the parlor door. <laughs> what's in the parlor? Roll advantage because oh, I'm helping you. Is- Ooh, it looks like your internet just went out. At uh, least it did on my iPad. No, no, we're still green. No, no drop frame. That's oh, good, good. Fam, good. So I would like to try to outstrength your rim. I'll roll my it's good bad. dice. What? It's bad. Oh. What are we just rolling a strength, strength contest? Straight up? Yeah. Yep. Did I add my strength? Yep. Well, good luck. Yeah, you little bitch. Okay. <laughs> Alright. I'd like to beat three. him, please. <laughs> I gotta I'd like to twist I this. Like okay. Oh! <gasps> So just one of them? Oh, I, I changed that. Like just the higher one of the two? Yeah. Yeah, I still got you B unless I fucking Yo, suck I like you, you know. bitch. Yeah, we're good. We're okay. good. I got a uh, 19. So I ripped the door off his hinges and Yorgrim's shoulder out of it. Barely. He barely you, moves it. You were it. able to rush forward as you rip the door <laughs> open. Um, Yorgrim, you, you feel the anger and the hatred that is billowing up inside of this entity within you. Uh, as the door is wrenched open, the rest of you are able to run in. We're gonna get her out of here. Just hang tight. I'm holding the door open uh, against Yorgrim's uh, wishes, as uh, I, and I'm ushering people in. You're strong for your size. <laughs> <laughs> Yorgrim, don't fight me, just uh, get inside. Uh, we'll fight you. <laughs> once everybody's in, I would attempt to shoulder Yorgrim in. <laughs> this seems fine. <laughs> once, once we usher everybody in, I would attempt to shoulder Yorgrim in. Can I move in? Yes, you, okay. you feel that she's not taking full control of you any longer. My name's Paul, and that's between y'all. <laughs> <laughs> My name's as, ben as you ben. shut the door, you feel a bit of ease come to you as the room around you quiets. Except for, for you, Yorgrim. You can still feel and hear the voice of Petunia Lockwood in your head. I'm going to send you a private message. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care for this. Oh my god. I care for it very much. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The door slams behind you. The fire roars and then slowly calms as the spirit board and the planchette begin to vibrate and hum. And you can feel what Petrini asks and wants of you. Okay, am I the only one who's playing the game here? You fucks, come on. Do we take it easy? 
We all sit around the table. <clears throat> or I do, anyway. It's humming. Lethica says, yes, the spirit, we do the same thing. I will grab Yorgrim's hand and put it on the planchette. And as you do, oh. I need you to uh, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Me? Uh, Yorgrim. Me? Uh, yeah. I don't care for this. Not great. We'll wow. just say that. Not great. Can I twist it? You may. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Take one out of there. Wait. No. What? No, twist it. Twist it. Yeah, we're going to twist it. We're Don't twist it. twist it? No, because what if the glitch It's is... four to one, no, Mike. What if, what if he's Shut up. for Petunia and we want her to lose? No, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Yeah, you're good. Twist it. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, okay. No, okay. don't mind me. Here, wait before you add. You got the same number. It was All faded. Right, same oh, number. That's faded. All right. You got you to gotta let, let, let sleeping go. Uh, seven. Garbo. Okay. You know what that means. <laughs> oh. I don't think oh. we do. Oh. Here we go. We don't. Ooh. Uh, how do we help our friend Yorgrim get rid of that horrible, I mean, Petrini, how do we help our friend Yorgrim get rid of the horrible lady of the house? You feel the planchette begin to vibrate, and it begins to move to S. H. E. She. L. Shell. I. Shell. V. B. Oh, yeah. E. Oh. S. She lives. I. N. Jesus. T. Man. H. E. A. T. T. We can't spell. I. C. I lost track of it. Yeah, she lives. She lives. She lives. Oh, she lives in the attic. And that is the. Oh, the woman. No, he said up. Uh, we never saw an attic. Well, we didn't go no, all the way up. There were. We saw so the stairs you never to an attic. saw the stairs to an attic. You never saw the entrance to an attic. Okay. What oh. your grim happened to see when you were outside when you saw oh. the ghost of Petunia yes. uh, rehang herself with the serrated blades. Uh, you saw that the house extended up further as if there was another floor, but right. you never saw right. any entrance to it. So the stairs, the stairs, that was the stairs you to, the took third to the third floor. floor. Okay. Okay, check. I All think, right. I think, um, I think, <coughs> ghost girl, no, I think when Marius overcame me, I'm not sure, but I don't hear her voice anymore. I feel no pull on my body. Oh, thank goodness that it all worked I out. Think she, <laughs> I think she might be gone. Oh, that's very awfully convenient and very Are you sure? Roll a perception check. Uh, uh, Jericho. Perception? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Gotta roll this right, damn it. <laughs> I really I really would like to... Oh, no. No, I don't... Uh, well, maybe. Perception? How about that? It'll be an, an 11. Uh, you... I would say with an 11, you do feel like a calm warmth in this room, almost as if you're protect, pr- protected by Petrini. And the warmth coming from the heart. Oh, Yogan, you, you, you saved my life. But I would bet every single gold piece I've ever seen in my entire life that you are not safe right now. Well, actually, no. Uh, I think Petrini's doing some some good. I think Petrini's protecting us for a little bit, but I don't know how long this is going to last. Well, what happens when we leave this room? I can't for now. imagine that she's gone, but I feel no pull from her. And I hear no words in my mind. Well, thank you, Petrini and, and Jorgen. I hope you're feeling well. Petrini, why did you call us up here? You feel the planchette begin to move. And it arms. moves to F R E. If what E if I kid while it's spelling, um, and everyone's like distracted with the pulling of it. I like to grab my shovel and roll an attack on the board. All right. Uh, I would like you to. Uh, I would like you to roll for an attack. You. Uh, I would actually Bastard. like. Um, I would like you to roll a perception check for me, please. Me. All oh. of you. The rest oh. of you. And disadvantage because you're currently asking questions. Ooh. After you, my friend. Not bad. 
Oh. Oh, a disadvantage? 18 and a 4? You fuck. 18 and a 1. <laughs> I suck. I got a 10. I fucking suck. I got an 18. Uh, I think I also got a 10. Let me check. So uh, a 9. Total. I got a 9. I suck. Damn. What did Lethica get? Oh, Lethica. Uh, let me roll, roll a disadvantage for her. Oh, she didn't get too good. A prescription. Let With only see. one of you board. succeeding, you are not able to Ten. stop what your oh, Grim is no. doing. 18. As roll a roll an attack and tell me how much damage. Right. Oh, uh, just straight into it, huh? Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. Fuck. Well, that feels bad. Uh. <laughs> you roll a hit, right? Before you roll damage? Do you want to roll a hit? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh. You get wrecked, you stupid orc. Wow. It's really insensitive. <laughs> Good. Uh, nine to hit? Um, I'm going to use a twist of dread to give you a reroll. Fuck this up, fuck this up, fuck it up, fuck it up. Oh, you stupid orc. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, <laughs> much better. Uh, <laughs> Infinitely better than the 21 first roll. <laughs> to hit. That hits. Roll for damage, please. <sighs> Don't fuck this up, Mace. Just get Whoa, a is this a 12? Uh, that's a 10. Oh, is it? 12, 12 is like the, 12 is the 12 tiny is the kind of like one. a d20, oh. but is it? 12 looks like a honeycomb. Am I a line? Oh, it's just one. Thank you. Yeah. I'm yeah. delicious and sweet. Well, yeah. the hand. You're sticky and odd I shaped. Didn't That's what I, mean. I am sticky and odd shaped, you losers. <laughs> uh, 12. Oh, Christ. 12 points of damage. Goodbye. Of damage. You, as, as it begins to move, F R E, you are distracted all but Jericho. And as you yell out to get something. everyone's attention, Yorgrim takes his shovel and do. slams it do. down into the spirit board. In doing so, completely cracking it in two, as you watch the planchette shatter and fall, silent. So if I, so do I have an, an opportunity to see him? If I, if I had got an eighteen and saw him, would there I be needed able to, do to be something? two of you to be able to stop him. Oh, okay. okay. So as soon as the, as soon as the shovel makes contact with this board and splinters it, I would tackle your. You immediately hear no! from your grim, mouth. I told you she was gonna get what she wants. <laughs> Damn you! No! Oh. I would be right there next to you, like. <laughs> Joe Grims, this isn't your fault, I but we have to make this right. I wouldn't fight him. I'd just take it. I'd just, yeah, and I'm she, not, I'm she not allows hurting you. It. I was just trying um, to stop and, you from. And her. as he grabs onto you, she, you see a look on I his snap face. Out of it. Stop joking um, you. <laughs> though it's Yorgrim's face, almost masked behind it, you can see the face of Petunia, and she looks to be relishing in your anger. No. Oh. All right, we've we've lost our connection to Petrini, but that doesn't mean that we cannot end this. Is the fire still in here? Yes. We it's, know where we have to go. I'm hey, so grim. sorry. This you're, is not your fault. You're grim. You're um, manipulated. You have now, another. I need you to roll a. Uh, I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Got to get that witch out of him. And I would say there are things you could potentially try to get so, to end his uh, possession. Well, like, does like, anyone have like, means of fire? Six. Are we like oh, you damn torches or anything? Like Briggsy, this yeah, was yeah, beyond are, his there control. There are essentially like lamps along the wall that you can pick up. And I would t- with take you. a lamp off the wall, and if it's lit, I would start walking back into the um, plant room and start torching all of the dead plants, and then throw it onto the bergamot tree. Okay. Uh, I'll say you're easily able to do that, and they go up in flames for about a second. And then as the smoke fills the room, the house itself seems to be unaffected. The old rotting wood uh, seeped through with the rains that still lash outside, and the bergamot tree in a strange, eerie blue flame as the skull beneath it continues to happen. No, 
No, Farron, stop! We are losing our minds! We know what we must do. We must not sway. We find the attic, and we kill the witch. But we've been all over this house. We haven't seen a way to get to the attic. Briggsy. Patrina, he's again, still here. Briggsy. You, as you say this, the fire rages. He's here. Well, how do we get to the attic? Hey, Yogan. You know, I think this is a bit of a fixer-upper, but it's got good bones. I can't say he's laughter on you. <laughs> Sweet lord. Such a stupid joke. I grant you useless player inspiration. <laughs> Please enjoy doing it. Jesus is gonna die. Yeah, I actually can't see you laugh. Make the wizard save me, motherfucker! I'm using all my goddamn spell slots on you fuckers! <laughs> Oh, oh come my on, god. Come on, come on, come on. Who are the natural <laughs> one? Yeah! Get the fuck out of my head! <laughs> and I'm I, cool. will, I will say that with with Jericho's power overcoming you, Petunia is not able to con- keep control of you. As you watch as the spirit of Petunia begins to rise out of Yorgrim's body and begins to float towards the ceiling. And just as quickly as you see her, she disappears from view. <laughs> you, Yorgrim, it goes to show that it's- Oh, I wouldn't put that away. Oh. oh I thought it was busted. It is. Oh. Uh. Well, it goes to show that, that a sour mood is is, is no match for, for a bit of, bit of humor. Uh, I'm going to take the book, though, Mr. Yorgrim, if you don't mind, until you're less green a gal around the gills. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, less green with everything. Oh, I mean, I, I mean, can I have the book, please? Yes. That's All right, keep an eye on him. Virgil, I don't know what is so funny about this whole circumstance. Petrini, if you're still here, please help us. How do we get to the attic? Uh, can you do it in your book? Does it take more energy than the planchette? Uh, can can you help us? How do we get to the what what Briggsy asked? The uh, the spirit board and the clan chat begin to shake. Ugh. All three pieces of them, but there seems to be with the crack in the center of it, it's not able to fully respond to you. Put put it oh. down. Oh. You have a problem to solve. You need to talk to this guy, and you have a broken spirit board. What are you going to do about it? Well, where is it? Does it matter how it's broken? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm out of spells. Not that I can fucking do anything. Oh, perhaps. Per- oh, Levica. Oh, you don't really have anything that can help us. <laughs> it's okay. Mm. Why don't you just relax quietly and meditate to your, your god you of choice? You don't necessarily have to use a spell or ability. You you are <sighs> capable people. <clears throat> what do you want to do? Maybe if we just push the pieces back together. Hold him in place. Anyone got any, any kind of to sorghum, any kind of <laughs> sticky binding agent? Mm-hmm. I would reach into my pack and take some of that nasty sap stuff that I was eating on the train and oh, try shit. to patch it uh, together. I would say that that's to a very it. clever use of something that you did have and did store in your pack. And I would say though it doesn't create, it do, though it doesn't make the board so just makes whole, it sticky, but. <laughs> It does keep the pieces together enough that the planchette slowly begins to hover, but you imagine you only have, instead of having a question each, you only have maybe one or two questions left to ask him. Um, all right. It's now or never. Come on, everybody. Let's see if this works. Well, that was a lot of damage. Good job with that flexing seal that you put on here. What's my dinner? Uh, Petrini, how do we get to the attic? It begins to move. B. E. H. I. N. D. P. A. I. N. T. I. N. G. Behind painting. How many paintings have we seen? I mean, a bunch. It's the big one. It's the horrible Weaselman. Exactly right. 
No, I, I would floor. say that one would immediately stand out in your mind. That on the it has very to be. on the third floor, when you immediately crested the steps under the third floor, there was the horrific painting of some kind of weasel creature with human hands and human and it was big, and human right? face. And it was filthy Jasper. And it was signed by Petunia Lockwood. Petunia, you have done us well. Please rest for now, and we will avenge you and your your wards. Should we ask about the thing below? What it is? Do you think you'll know? I'm hurry, worried. we don't have much time. I'm if you worried. don't hurry, I'll keep talking and rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Oh, that was good. I feel very inspired. <laughs> we could ask if we should trust it. I believe. It's a great question. I believe that we've been given our mission. If you want to ask another question, so be it. But I know where I'm headed, and I know what I must slay. How, All right, how do we put it to rest? How do we put it to rest? Put what to rest? The thing, the thing, Miss Kellen. Oh, Rob, go ahead and ask. I, I already asked one. Oh, someone else asked. I already asked one too. This is not my place. I know what I must do. Oh, yes, I'm laughing. How do they put this creature to rest? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're very well said, <laughs> and, as, and as you say that, it begins to move. And this is a lock, so I'm not going to make you move the plan, uh, Jack. Thank you. Ritual when dead. One memento per soul. Yours and ours. Dining. Music. Bath. Children's. Yes. Butler's. Nursery. Please free us. And then the board goes silent. That was a lot. And I would say you're easily able to determine that those are room names. Dining room, music room, bathroom, children's room, butler's room, nursery room. Please free us. Okay. So basically all So words. once again, ritual when dead. One memento per soul. Yours and ours. Dining, music, bath, children's, butler's, nursery. And for the sake of brevity, should you choose to travel to any of these rooms, I'm just going to have you roll a d20 to determine how safe your travel is. Mm, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it sounds like we would need an item from each room and then an item from each of us. Kill this motherfucker. You ritual its ass back to the fucking shower room. Out of character. Marius, I think that you're very astute. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so. Thank you, benevolent DM. I am a himbo that graduated college. High school. Oh, 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 thank you for the follow, Typhonius. Thank you, Typhonius. And thank you for the oh, 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 And can we and please mods. get rid of that spam? And get out of here. Oh, 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 that to us with your monster hunter. I would roots. say, Mary, you, you were first smart time, enough. As first in, time chatting, I'm not a monster bits. hunter. Wow, that's, that's amazing. amazing. That's the oh, best God. first time God. chat God. I ever God. saw. God. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm, I'm just teasing. Uh, yes, I would relay that in character in a way that. Uh, and you, you know, would, made you, sense. I would say, you would feel the the fires uh, erupt almost in agreement, almost in assurance. We must, we must travel. We must, we must go back to all of the rooms that we visited. We have to get a token from each of these poor souls that has been damned in this house. And we must each give something ourselves. And then we will free them when we slay whatever horrific creatures in the attic. But it says after dead, right? That's what the, that's what the board said, right? So we collect right. the things. Ritual one dead. We kill the creature. And we do our ritual. Or do we just kill the creature now? And then do everything else? We shouldn't double back. Let's go to the go to the rooms that floor by and floor. And I would say, for all intents and purposes, though you haven't been to some of these, you know where these rooms are. You I was going to say, totally we haven't been to a dining room or, or a music room. No, they're on the first floor. They're the two rooms you didn't explore. On Jericho the first makes floor. a good point. We gather the things yes. and we head to the attic. All right. There will be no turning back. <gasps> Goodbye, Blanchett. Boom. And so I'm just going to make you roll 1d20 for the entirety of this house to see how well, as a group, you are able to, um, in all of the hallways, anytime you're not in an individual room, you are lashed by these tentacles. You have now realized that Kellen has made her way into the house proper. Oh, and man. these tentacles are writhing out of the walls 
Um, but in each of these in each of these rooms, for some reason, they maybe it's the protection of the fireplaces that the trainee resides in. But the tentacles have not been able to find purchase in these rooms. We must be resolute in our purpose. So we're gonna use your steel yourself to represent That's us going perfectly through. Perfectly fine. Um, all right. I think it's across the hall. Is the dining room I somehow know about? <laughs> and I guess we'll we'll run out into the hallway and into the dining room. Yeah. Roll a d20 to see how well you fare. Oh, and Petrini in his blaze allowed you to benefit from a short rest. Oh, so do what you need to benefit from. Let's go. Thank you, Petrini. Thank, Thank you for you, being Petrini. a friend. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you. I am short resting and getting my spell slots back. But also roll that d20. Reset maximum HP. Should we take time for on these d20s? Yikes. What was this running? I don't actually even know what, what was my it for? Just tell me what the number hit is. dice are. <laughs> my D10s. Five. I also got a five. You know, oh, well, yeah, we only need one. Yeah, I rolled a f- one roll. Oh, for oh. That, that's the roll. For, for this movement from to this room. I did not roll, realize that. To the next I feel one, we're gonna roll now. Like yeah, that shouldn't it. have you happened. Have five. I thought we were each you, rolling and you taking will an average. Each take two points of damage as Thanks along for, the way at some point you were lashed and um, attacked by these things. Okay, we take two damage as we're going into the dining room. <sighs> okay. Okay. You 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 enter the room, slam the door behind you, and you realize it's completely filled with ghosts. Oh great. You blink for a moment realize that the ghastly white sheets all around you are simply dust sheets covering the chairs, uh-huh. candelabras, serving tables, and cabinets that fill this dining room. The still life paintings on the walls have not been spared from dust and decay, featuring numerous scenes of opulent feasts with each one sure to feature a porcelain cup filled with steaming tea. But the closer you look, the more the fading oils of the artwork made the food look rotten in most cases, and wholly horrid and misshapen in some. Could swear that one turkey looks far too close to an infant for your liking. Oh, a roast, Lord. a roast pig that seems more weasel than swine, and mm-hmm. a bowl of sugar cubes that might just be large molars. And as your eyes adjust the dark, where no one had been sitting at this table, instead you now see these strange forms of large, misshapen weasels feasting on this disgusting, rotting food as it slowly becomes more and more corporeal. And at the very head of the table, this top hat lopsided, sits the crooked man. And we're looking for something in particular. Do they see, like, do they acknowledge when we come into the room? They're feasting and feasting on this horrifying uh, table of food. And all of them pay no mind to you as they rip leg and haunch from a uh, festering turkey, child, who knows, as they begin to, to eat it down. But the man, the crooked man, looks towards you as he raises a cup to his lips. And you see, strange though it may seem, the cup at his, at his fingertips seems to be shining with an eerie blue glow. And he notices you. It doesn't do, it doesn't do you good to run through the house. Take a seat, enjoy the feast. We'll all be crooked together. Briggsy, you're quick. Steal the cup and we move on. Don't mind if I do. Uh, I would, uh, I'll walk up to him and I'll say, look, we're trying to help you. We're trying to free you. All right, now give me the cup. (laughs) <laughs> he'll he'll look towards the seat that's next to him. You can have my cup once you finish your plate. And you see that where the plate had been empty is now piled filled with maggots, worms, <laughs> rotting meat, and a cup no full person. of moldy drink. <laughs> oh, I've had worse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my uh, God. Virgil opens his mouth and his Vuvuzela comes out. Uh, <laughs> oh, dude, killed it. Killed it! Uh, <laughs> that is a 20. You, you immediately move towards it. You do not sit down as you 
consume the horrific remnants on this plate and you drink back the murky, moldy liquid in the goblet. And as you finish the last bit of it, you, not having any taste, were the perfect candidate for this. As you're unaffected by the horrificness of this moment. And he looks towards you with his crooked smile. You can see the blood pooling within his jaws. The rows of teeth stretching back far deeper into his throat than you would expect. As he looks towards you, and for the first time, you see a, a hint of humanity. Please save us. And he hands you the cup. I'll just nod and I'll tip my hat at him. And I'll snatch the cup. All right, that's one down. Well Let's done. Go. Well done, Briggsy. What's your next? Oh, that was a terrible feast. Uh, dining, children, music. Uh, I'm trying to think what else is on this floor. It's this one. We haven't gone yeah, to this one. Yeah, the music room is the last. Oh, okay. One. Okay. Uh, a d20 to see how well you fare. I'll roll it. Not me. I'll the DC is ten. One. It's really low. Oh. So. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Oh, a sixteen. A straight natural. You 16. you are easily able to make your way through the hallway and into the music room. And as you slam the door behind you, you immediately see and hear the music in this room as floating aloft appear to be the specters of the ghosts of hundreds of dancing children. All of them wailing and crying in pain as they're forced to dance to the horrific music that emanates from the corner of the room. All of them looking down at you with sad, sunken eyes as they're forced to dance. Your eyes are averted to the edge of the room where Briggsy and Yorgrim, you recognize someone. The ghostly form covered in bees, what you can guess to be Gaston Dread, as he plays a beautiful harpsichord shining with blue light. It's Gaston. It's the bee guy. It's the bee guy. A harpsichord? How are you supposed to get the harpsichord? I, I, will get your I would say you would notice that one of the strings, or, sorry, not a harpsichord, a harp. Uh, there is a harpsichord in the room, but it's a harp that he's playing. Oh! And so it is one of the strings you notice is glowing far more blue than the others. You imagine you could take a single string. Do we just cut the string from this ethereal harp? What will happen if we do so? This one's mine. I'll stand whatever test he poses. Well, I don't know. I'm I'm sort of a musical kind of fella. Do you know how to play a harp? I don't. I know how to cut string, though. Well, that was a, a very cool thing to say. You should go take it. Is Edgy right? one liner aside? Oh. I'm with your room on this. I <laughs> you think. know I am too. <laughs> I walk towards. I walk towards Gaston. I walk towards Gaston. You walk towards him, <laughs> and he looks towards you for a moment. And he looks up. He says, "If I stop playing, you will wail and cry. Leave me. Leave this house. We won't leave this house until everyone is put to rest, including you." There's a look of sadness on his face, and you can see that, at least in this spirit, just like with Sally and with Arthur, there is no malevolence. There was no, there was no foul play. This is a person who succumbed to the wickedness of whatever witch caused all of this, and Petunia Lockwood herself. He looks towards you and he shakes his head. You can stop playing. Uh, I reach towards the harp, look at him, and then kind of look upwards and just say, Help us. Help them. The music must continue to play. Help us. Maybe Jericho was right. Maybe he should play a tune so that he can stop and we can take the, the string. I will say, looking around the room, you do see that there are other instruments. There is there's a harpsichord. There is a there is a set of small drums. There is a tambourine. Can you a play bell. anything? 
bang that shovel on the drum, do something. Well, I mean, I could give I could give the harps a quarter to try. I don't really quite have the the. the, the I'm more of a, a banjo kind of fellow, another string, maybe a mandolin, a little guitar here and there. My preference is banjo, maybe a little bit of ukulele. But I, mean, I don't you know, care if you snap your damn twig fingers, just do something. Okay, I suppose, you know, it, it, it really, it, a harpist accord is really just a stringed instrument. I mean, what, what could be so different? I, and I will walk over and I will, you know, do my, my Bugs Bunny uh <laughs> with my tail, my, my, my coat, uh, and I'll sit down on the seat. Oh, and there's an organ against the wall. For oh. Okay. oh, I do play the organ. <laughs> oh, you didn't say that. <laughs> oh, if I'd known. Uh, that wasn't one of the things you listed. So. <laughs> uh, and I will, um, I'll think about, uh, I'll think about uh, what I had seen from Marius uh, after kind of coming up, and he's completely covered in uh, <clears throat> in in blood. And I'll play like a certain tune that that reminds me of, and do the I best. I need that you I can. to roll a charisma saving throw for me. Oh gosh, gosh! Oh charisma though, that's where I'm a Viking. Well, that's Lethica. Lethica, thank you for your your, your encouragement. Uh, Seventeen. <laughs> Good. 17. You begin to play on the instrument in front of you, and for a second. As, as the music starts and Gaston almost seems entranced by the music you're playing, he lets go of the harp that he's playing and stares up at you. The children dancing in the air around you all turn their heads towards you, their mouths open wide as they all begin to wail and cry in pain, as they begin to shift and shape into the shape of of weasels with children's faces and children's hands as they all begin to climb, to wiggle and climb through the air towards you. But as the music continues to play, as you withstand this horrific image in your head as you're watching them descend down through the air as if coming towards you, crying, screaming in pain and agony, the music begins to take hold and be beautiful. They all begin to rise again, their faces serene, as they clasp hands and begin to dance. Can I play the music that I think that I'm thinking of? Sure. Yeah. Um, hold on, this is a <laughs> And I'm just thinking of like Marius with like the blood coming down him. <laughs> is it working? <laughs> and it appears to be. You see this as an opportunity, and you're easily able I to grab the harp. to uh, wrench the wrench the string from the harp. And as you do so, Gaston reaches out and grabs your hand. Help us! Thank you. We will. We'll make this right. I take the string. You do. You do so. And I will stop playing. I need a d20 to see how you fare moving up to the children's room. I you roll this one? No, please. <laughs> Looks good. Uh, 17. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Hell All yeah. Right. You are, you feel that you are beginning to get used to this. Which way to dodge, what to look for, the sounds that alert you to the uh, emergence of one of these bloody uh, tooth roots as it pierces through the sides of the walls. And you're able to quickly jump up the broken parts of the stairs onto the second floor landing and make your way towards the children's room. And as you enter and slam the door behind you, you are met with what looks to be a bloody toy war. Is in this room, toy soldiers and evil teddy bears have taken the blocks and bricks and began to and began to create a barricade around what appears to be a certain toy. Small toy soldier lying on its back, gaunt, weakened, sickly looking, emanating with a silver blue light. And as you look at it, you see its facial features look similar to that of Arthur Lockwood. As these horrific toy abominations build almost like a, a cask around it, entombing it, in these toy blocks. And as they hear you move, the creak of the wood, they all turn and look towards you. One of these teddy bears with vicious rows of teeth after teeth after teeth 
holding a shining metal blade in his hand as they all rush towards you. I need you all to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh. Oh, as you are to... now as you are now assaulted by horrific Blinsky toys. No. All with a lust for blood. Natural 20. Ooh, natural 20 as well. 13. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, Lethica also crushed it. 18. 11. 10 is the DC. Oh, oh just 24. God damn it. Okay. Just be there. You are able to swat off these entities and you, er, and these these creatures that are emboldened, but you see that, that where you're swatting them away, others are still using these blocks to entomb what appears to be a soldier that looks similar to uh, Arthur Lock. As as I see these creatures running at us, I would use my shield to like bash them away in a wave and say, what manner of children's toy is this? War is no game. And I would begin to approach where this tomb is is being uh, built and try to like, you know, I don't know how big it is, but like bat it away it, with my hands. It's pretty large. Like these are, I would say these are like two foot tall teddy bears that are charging towards you with blades. I would be trying to like bash them away with my sword and like kick the tomb open and try to get like to this to roll for poor, attack. this poor creature that is being entombed. Ooh, for just a regular old weapon attack, 17. I would say that hits. You're able to. You're able to hit some of them. Um, inside the walls of this structure, you can hear this the small voice of Arthur Lockwood begging for mercy as he screams for your help. Help me! Help me! No child should be making war. And I'm trying to press forward to get to this. It's See, wrong because people. you are, yes. because you are Marius, because you have fought in wars, you bash teddy bears like and other them. toy soldiers. You are breaking, um, you're breaking these uh, wooden horses in half with your bare hands as you charge through the entire brick structure, toppling down. Um, I need you to make um, a dexterity saving throw for me, please. Come on, come on. DC 13. Oh yeah, that's gonna be, well, I think I, I, think I meet it. Cause it's plus one, plus two from my new feet. Thanks to Richard. So 15 <laughs> meter beat. You, uh, you are able to um, knock the structure down in a way <sighs> where if, if you hadn't raised your shield at that moment, the blocks would have crushed the toy soldier of Arthur Lockwood beneath their weight. But you are able to live, lift the limp body of this toy in your hand and it appears to be bleeding. It looks up at you. Help us, please help us. And it pulls its sword from its side and it raises it to you. Help us, Sir Marius. Um, so I am, I'm cradling this toy in my hand as I shield it with my shield and myself. And I might be like, you know, getting all sorts of fucked up by teddy bears with knives. Um, it's a horrific teddy bear pack knife. Do I, do I feel as though I can heal this doll or that I need to lay it down and take the sword? You feel like you need to heal this sword. But nothing um, that you would do is going outside of finishing what you know needs to be done here. Nothing else is going to help. Uh, Knowing that this poor creature, this this toy is 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 lost, I would gently lay it down and take the sword between two of my fingers that it is that it has given me. And you have now obtained. You can feel it almost emanating with a bit of Arthur's spirit. You found his memento. As the eyes on this toy soldier roll back, and it goes limp. <sighs> Rest well. I, I, I clench the entire thing in my fist, holding it, it safely, whether it sticks out or not. I'm, I'm keeping it safe. Rest well, young soldier. And as as I uh, burst forth from the toys, I'm smashing them and kicking them and stomping on them it is violently. A, it is a bloody toy war in here. As teddy bears are ripped in half. They're stuffing and feathers flying all around the room. When Marius is finished, it is absolute toy carnage. As in the very center of this, almost like a almost like a crater in the room, is the limp, lifeless body of the toy soldier. My, my poor prince, I am so sorry that I could not do more for you. Will you be 20 for me, please? Oh boy, I would just show everybody that I had it. 
<laughs> well done, Shamarius. You got a five. All right, you are progressing to the next room. You are going to take four points. Oh boy. Of slashing, piercing, and bludgeoning damage. Boop, 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 boop. Four, you said? Four. Whoop. Whoop, whoop, whoop. You make your way through the hallways, heading directly towards where you know where you know you need to go next. The bathroom where you had you had hoped had laid to rest the the soul of uh, Sally Lockwood. And as you enter into this room, it has overcome itself with fungi. What had been in here before had been a lot, but this is almost a, a veritable garden of fungus. I need you all to roll an intelligent saving throw for me. As you breathe in the, the oh spores God, that pop and, and burst from all of these, from all this fungus. God, I, I, see fail I roll like hot garbage. Yeah, I fail as well. Like abdomen. Yeah. Seven. You, I also uh, fail. Uh, 13 for Jericho, and Int is a 14 for Lapa. Jericho and Lethica, you're the only ones that are able to shrug off the hallucinations. The rest of you begin to see the faces of Sally, Arthur, uh, Eustace, Petunia, Petrini, and Gaston all morphing in and out of these of these fungus as they attach themselves to the wall. They beg you and plead for you to help them, to save them. And you are caught staring at them as Jericho and Lethica you see lying in the very recesses of the tub, the doll you remember leaving there. But its body is contorted and twisted, almost as if it was broken and knotted to fit inside of something small. Its hair flung over the back of its Ugh. head, spread out in front of it, um, hiding and guarding its face. As you begin to see hands emerge from your bag of holding it reaches out towards the doll and begins to drag it towards the mouth of the oh, bag. fuck that noise. Uh, I am going to, um, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Uh, I'm going to, <laughs> uh, I don't know what to do. Oh, uh, no. so, so Jericho sees Lethica and Lethica. And you will notice that the doll is shining with that similar yeah, yeah. silver light. Um, I am going to, uh, what? I would just be looking at all the fungus on those I mean, we're, we're trying just, to help you. We're just we're distracted, trying. yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm I am going... Oh. I'm basically just licking wallpaper. That's what I feel like I'm doing right now. It's not very It's not very You're stroking the fuzzy wall. I am going to uh, look at the bag, and I'll see that it's... I'm seeing that Lethica has the bag, yes. right? I'm going to look at- The arms are outstretching, elongating far more than they should be. From elbow to wrist to incredibly long um, fingers. Um, I'm going to uh, look at Lethica and I'm gonna see this and I'm gonna split second and I'm gonna say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Miss Lethica. As I'm, my, uh, my head is going to just completely unhinge and fall back. And then uh, suddenly it uh, it snaps back upward, and in where my uh, the the glowing of my mouth and my eyes once were is a complete void within. Except there's two huge uh, eyeballs that have a cross pupil that are the same as Virgil's. Oh God! And Jesus. Uh, I will uh, uh, it will uh, look at Lethica. At, uh, staring at her mask, and uh, the, my mouth will open, and it will say, "Lethica, your secret. Give that to me." As I shriek that out, okay. Uh, as oh, I'm going to cast uh, dissonant whispers <laughs> on Lethica. <laughs> Want to be on the side anymore? <laughs> you want to do it on Lethica or the thing that's coming out? If of the I bag? could do it on the thing in the bag, she, I, what I would say is Lethica does not have control of this thing. She just has the bag at her hip. So I will say you can do it on the thing in the bag. What does it need to roll? Uh, yeah, either okay. that or sending her out of the room to get the bag out of the room. So okay. e either either one, either well, because I said Lethica, I, I would <sighs> Virgil is or Jericho's thinking Lethica did send her out of the room okay. and hopefully take the thing with it. Okay. Who knew one of the player characters uh, would be the big bad? <laughs> uh, wisdom 15. Jesus! Well, does Lethica need to roll with them? Uh, oh my god. Yeah, I guess so. 
while you're thank thinking you about that. Twist, yeah, Tristan. thank you so much for the twist. Oh, oh, Let's give a twist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please give us some. Yeah, oh, we got this we one. We need it. <laughs> be lucky. I think you're going to say Beetlejuice. Thank you. Look at <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, yeah. Okay, I'm using I'm using I'm using my worst die. <laughs> I'm using my worst die. Wisdom. Oh, that's gonna be an 18. That's a pass. That's a yeah. pass. So she succeeds. She does. Um, and so uh. what happens, I guess. Or I guess. It's continuing to move towards the... Uh, you still have time to do something. And like I said, these things don't need to be abilities that you use. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna let it roll. Uh, I'm going to attempt to... As I, as, as, as I see that it fails on Lefica, I'm gonna look at the... It's gonna then shift to... My head's going to like... <laughs> As it turns and it tilts, it tilts. My head tilts back and forth like a bird's. Uh, as uh, the eyes are staring at the hands, and um, and uh, the as as my mouth will open and as I cast my whole moisture, I have the spell slot. At this. this point, the hand reaches the doll and begins to drag it up and over the edge of the tub. I need you all to roll another uh, intelligence saving throw uh, to okay. see how you fare against So this if I fail the first time, 15. I could now? Or 15. Do I, 15. What do you mean? If I failed the first time? So everyone who failed needs to roll to see if you continue to be succumbed to the spell. I pass. Okay. 15. 13? Uh, well, I pass. pass. Yeah. Oh, it has. So okay. you're all able to Ugh. shake it off as you watch as Jericho, his head is moving in a strange bird-like way. Uh, your mouth still open and the horrible eyes still showing from Yeah, and so I'm attempting to now use the same spell on the creature that has grabbed the doll. As you see that uh, Lethica stands there as the arm reaches out from inside the bag and is dragging the doll towards it. Its body contorted in a way um, to fit inside the mouth of the bag. Provided, uh, I guess, the outcome of this yeah. spell, I, I assume that I'd be able to at least make, uh, you know, some sort of understanding of what's going on. And if the spell doesn't work, I've drawn my sword and I'm, I'm pulling it down on the, on the arms. Did I say the bag of the mouth? Oh, maybe. Oh, God, I hope so. No, I think that knows is just <laughs> he knows me. <laughs> so I don't don't gaslight me, knows. <laughs> uh, as I would basically, whenever I have a chance to basically cast it again, still in this form. I would say uh, it fails. Uh, as it will uh, call out, man in the bag, flesh, hair, nails. I will consume you. And then uh, I'm going to attempt to do it again. Wisdom. Uh, it failed. Uh, wisdom 15. And it's going to drop what it's holding and then try to flee away from me and take damage, psychic damage, if that matters. I will say you have no way of knowing whether it took any psychic damage, yeah. but what you will see is that it does drop the doll. Oh, nice. And the arm, almost like a slinky. Um, wiggles and uh, whips its way back into the bag before you finally see just the tips of its long, dark yellow and brown fingernails submerged. Like when you the hit the button on an iron and yeah, it and zips just... the cord back. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what would, would, this be, would this be like surprising to me? Yes. Like, oh, we wouldn't know anything. I would race towards Jericho, grab him by the scuff of his collar, pin him against a wall, and be like, You let him go, Petunia! And. Go ahead. I was just, while he, I would be like, oh god, and, and run to the doll and, and scoop it up and kind of warily look at you and not realizing that you were you were helping. <laughs> Get out of you are able to reach the doll and pick it up. It falls limp in your arms, unfurling from the strange knotted position it had been in as its head slowly lolls and then spins completely around backwards and looks take at the doll. Take the doll. <laughs> as it says. Save us. Please save us. We're trying, child. I don't want to go back in the bag. That's how I died. I don't want to go back in the bag. We're not going to let it happen. We're going to save you. Save us. So and just she as going. she says it, she's glowing. 
Um, and just as she says it, the eyes roll back in the doll's head, just like those strange dolls when you lay them down, they go to sleep. The eyes just roll back and forth, open, closed, open, closed, until they lay unclosed. And it's still glowing, but Sally does not seem to be responding. By Lathander! Yorgrim, what are you doing? Let release Jericho! Is he alright? I have no fucking What's Jericho! Going? He's possessed! No, he's. And. Okay. And uh, there'd be like two more looks at you, and then it, there'd be a voice that would say, Yorgrim, tell me your kill. And my head would then snap back, and then. Garsh! <laughs> Did we get the doll? Oh, how how to do? Well done, Farron. Yorgrim, Jericho, don't are you to okay? Me. Release him what is wrong now! With you? Uh, but what's that? Oh, you know. I'll something. drop him and let him go. But I'm standing right in front of him. Uh, Virgil will then kind of fly over from where he had been and land on my shoulder, and he will let out a very smug, uh, smug like call, and then he would he look at you, Yorgrim. His eyes are going to stay completely on you, and he's going to tilt and like look at you the exact same way that those eyes have been looking on you before. And uh, Jericho, now the uh, me, the uh, my the glow of, of my face now returning. Um, I would say, well, sorry about that. You're going sometimes when I get desperate. I got I got to ask your old son. I got to ask my old feathered friend for a little bit of help. You know what? I don't I don't got all, all the power my, my, myself. It's not it's not. It's not me. It's, it's, it's... Are you saying you're not possessed? Well, in a manner of speaking, <laughs> sounds a lot like you're possessed. Well, no, I, 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 I'm more. No, I guess according to most definitions, that you could probably argue. We should probably keep going and not talk about this right now. I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't like being the center of attention unless I'm performing a tune. Jericho, are you okay? I, I'll, I'm fine. I'm fine, Jorgen. This happens all the time. You haven't seen. There have been a lot of worse instances of of old Virgil having his having his way and his day. You know what they say? Every weird, gross crow has its day. They don't say that. Only I I've say never that. Heard that <laughs> no, no, I, that, that makes sense. I, I made you it have up. Control over yourself. The entire house begins to shake. You can feel that whatever Kellen is doing to the base of this house has almost made its way to the third floor. We have to move. We're running out of time. All right, keep we an eye on speak of this again, though. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Roll a d20 to see how well you fare. I'll do it this time. I was there, I already did it and failed. Got it. 11. You are able to make your way easily um, out of out of the room and up the stairwell that leads to the third floor. You see the, the, um, the toothy vines... Uh, as they uh, writhe along the hallway, climbing up the walls, uh, and you, but you are able to make it through the door and onto onto the third floor, and it is here that you quickly make your way into nursery. Here, I guess is right as here. you as you look at the landing and you see that horrible painting oh. of the weasel. Ugh. And you know what lies beyond it. Oh. But there is still ah, shit. Fuck. Sorry, my bad, guys. Shit. Fuck. But everybody know my ball. Oh, there is still uh, more. Well, there's still more to nah, do I'm here. Wrong. As you make your way towards which of the rooms you have the butler's room, you have Petrini's room, and the nursery. Nursery. Let's go. You make your way into the nursery. The room is filled to the brim with a wriggling mass of horrific vermin. Rats, beetles, centipedes, oh. pigeons, crows, mice, shrews, worms, all spilling out of the holes in the walls. And in the very center of it is the wailing of an infant, crying and screaming. I need you all to roll a wisdom saving throw. Test. Oh, well, I fail. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Left the good crushes up. Left the good crushes up. I fail. I fail. Jericho fail. fails. Twelve. Well, I would guess. Thirteen is what you need. So Oof. anyone who fails immediately falls unconscious. Yep, that would be I me. I fall unconscious immediately. So we should reset our hit points to zero? No, it's, it's unconscious is in a sleep. Got it. Oh, Not wait. unconscious is in death. There's a bunch of gross up. <laughs> well, Some of you are familiar with this feeling of sleep. 
but it overcomes you as your mind goes quiet. Those of you, I guess Lethica and Norgrim, that uh, are still are still awake, you watch as the wriggling mass begins to roll over your friends and begin to cover them. And in, and in doing this, in their undulating movements, you're able to see what appears to be that disgusting vermin creature that you had seen before, Filthy Jenkins, and in its humanoid <laughs> hands are Petunia's pliers as it rips the teeth from an infant, from an in- infant's mouth, an infant too young to even have teeth as it pulls tooth after bloody tooth out of its maw. The pliers glow with that faint blue and silver. Filthy Jenkins. Filthy Jasper. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, Filthy Jasper. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I hate Filthy Jenkins. Filthy Jenkins is a cousin. Is filthy it? Jenkins was my neighbor growing up. Rich, Rich can attest literally everything to me as a Jenkins, so. I know everything is old. <laughs> it seemed right, so it's just with it. What's happening? And I would say you would, you would be aware that you may be able to wake up your friends. This would be French, far more French. deadly if you had all fought us. Uh, I think that what Lethica would do is she would uh, talk, uh, she would speak out and say something cryptic about Shaw or something and <laughs> cast a dark, spooky word of radiance uh, to fill the, the room with darkness and swallow the animals and try to grab the, the thing. Okay. I uh, would say she casts that. It's a con 15 saving so, so it does damage. It does damage to like purge the the the. the so I'll roll one for animals. all of the animals, and I'll roll yeah. another one for Filthy Jasper. Filthy Jasper succeeds. All of the animals erupt in this dark, radiant light, and you watch as the centipedes, the bats, the spiders, those of you that are awake, shrivel up as their mm. life essence is um, is consumed from them. Uh, Filthy Jasper. Uh, takes a bit of the damage, but does not seem to completely be consumed by this darkness. He almost seems as if he relishes in it. As you watch, as he reaches forward with the pliers and pulls one long molar out of the back of this infant's mouth, he looks towards all of you and makes a sound wholly inhuman that doesn't seem to be a language any of you understand. As he drops the pliers, and skitters into the walls, and you hear as he makes his way up. Uh-oh. Fuck this thing, man. Uh, uh, is it Lethica will pick I'm them up. I'm asleep. Lethica picks them up? Lethica will pick them up. Because you already have the, the heart. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm good. As yeah. your hands come into contact with this, these hor- this horrible tool that you know was used for countless untold uh, malevolent activities, you immediately see the form of Petunia Lockwood appear in front of you. Um, those of you that were asleep find yourself coming to consciousness and you wonder <sighs> for a second, am I still dreaming? Is this a nightmare? That was bizarre. As she stares down at you and she says, she's gonna get you. There's nothing you can do to stop me. Best the brown tooth will win. She's using my body as she needs to take my train. Have fun with her. Filthy Jasper won't let you get too far. And Vessel has already begun. And with that, you'll see as her form slowly begins to fade and she dissipates from her. Did I... I was asleep. I still witnessed all that. Yeah, you woke up. We just woke up and saw her. Do I get a too. sense of how genuine she felt? I would say roll a perception, or roll, yeah, a perception check. Insight. Insight. That's why. And was it pretty Vesla? fucking good? Vesela. Vesela. V-E-S-S-E-L-A. V-E-S-S-E-L-A. I'm really, I'm really bad at spelling, so give me a sec. V-E-S-S-E-L-A. Yeah. V-E-S-S-E-L-A. I nailed it. Imagine uh, my name being Brown Tooth. Ah. Um, and she seemed incredibly serious. She did not seem afraid of you. She seemed like she was, I mean, but you you would imagine this is a woman that literally jumped to her, her death in a way that caused her head to be severed from her body in complete um, belief of whatever, whoever this entity is. She has faith in Vessel of Brown Tooth. 
got it. <sighs> no. So that's her then. That's the that's the witch, Vesla. Oh, she said something about that creature stopping us. We must stomp it out. Well, he's awfully small. I'm sure that right beneath your boot sprint, he'd be turned into boogle butter. That's my <laughs> plan, Jericho. Where did he go? He's quick, though. You've got to watch him. He's gone to join his master uh, up in the attic. I'm sure. I'm afraid you're walking into the next room. I just seem to fall unconscious. D20. See how well you do moving just the butler's room. We need one I'll more do it. relic. I'll do it. I guess. Uh oh. Can we twist that? Yeah, we're gonna twist. That. We're gonna twist that. We're gonna rip. Twist a Rooney. We're gonna do a twist. The old twist the old out. Twist a Rooney. This is for you, chat. Oh, that'll be an 18. Oh, chat. That's pretty good. You're, Thank you, chat. You're able to quickly make your way towards the next room, though. You feel almost a I sense know. of complete rage as you as you maneuver these these hallways, wanting to make your way upstairs. But there's one more room. There's one more memento that has to be collected. And as you slowly open the door, a silver light blinds you for a second. As you look in and you see, standing in the very center of what had been Petrini's room, is the image of a man wreathed in silver, holding a staff that has the image of a burning, blazing moon with a crescent on it. I would say anyone who's slightly religious at all would know this to be the image of Fultis. Ah. And as you stare at it, you begin to see it move and twist as the moon begins to overtake it, as the image changes, the body of Foltis, the man, changes to that of a woman, and where a head should be is the head of a goat skull. As it lets Jesus. out a horrific cackle, I need all of you to make a constitution saving throw. Oh no! Oh, maybe that's actually okay. Oh god, I failed. Calm saving for you. Okay, I got a 10. <sighs> no, so oh, I got a 7. 14 for Jericho. Man, I suck uh, tonight. Natural seven. 20. 11. Yeah, a bunch for 8. 10 is the DC on We both passed. I just oh, need it. Well, I suck, course. man. I fucking that suck. I failed. Like that. <laughs> Together. Rich? Pass. Sorry. Thank you. You have to start letting me know, because you haven't been. Oh, no, I, I said that I passed. You probably, yeah. Sorry. You gotta give the thumbs out. Get your thumbs out, Rich. God. Go. Anyone who failed, you begin to feel an oppressive heat as you look towards the bed, which the last time you had been in this room had been completely empty for a moment, until you see what appears to be the burned, wriggling body of Petrini himself as his skin begins to melt away from the flames of the fire that he had been burned alive in. And as his skin melts away and he screams, the form of Foltis we've been trying to pray to, turning into the effigy of, of Mother Night, you oh. begin to see, you begin to feel the heat as it intensifies and intensifies, those of you that fail suffer from one level of exhaustion as the heat overcomes you completely. Well, I'm deep as his shrieking exhausted. and horrified look as he reaches out towards you, clutching onto something around his neck, shining in silver blue light, not melting against his skin, pure silver prayer beads to Fultons. What do you do? Petrini, what horrors I visited upon you. Sorry. It's okay, Yorgrim. It's okay, Petrini. Uh, uh, why don't you just rest while I grab this for you and we'll put you to rest real soon. And I'm just gonna, because I, I, everyone has taken something else, yes. right? So I, so, so I will re step oh, forward weird. and I will just uh, read forward. Like, well, I've, I've been through fire before and I'm just gonna try to snatch it away from them. It, not snatch it, I'll try to be gentle by taking something from you, the dying You man. place your hand on it and at first, you want to rip your arm away as the heat from this metal feels like it's searing into into you. But you are not made of flesh. And the heat that emanates from it does not does not burn you as you are able to quickly rip the prayer beads from his neck. As the heat begins to dull, the flames begin to, to dissipate. And the image of Foltis begins to shift from Foltis to Mother Night to Foltis to Mother Night to nothing but a shining silver silver orb, orb of the full moon, just dancing in the middle of the room. And you hear the skittering above you, a filthy jasper. 
Well, I think that's... It's that's the last piece. Six mementos. So we're done. We can go upstairs. Have some respect for it. Right. Let's go to the picture then. Ready to kill a hag. Uh, we'll go to the picture. You stand in front of the picture, and as you stare at this, you see hidden things in the back. Images of witches burning. Children being torn apart by weasels. Piles of dead corpses, which at one point had looked like rotting leaves. All hidden within the painting, and there at the forefront, in all of his filthy glory, his filthy jasper. Looking down at you from the image in this painting, almost as if he's snub-nosing you. His humanoid face looking down his nose at you as if you were beneath him. What do you do? Reach up and just claw, take my long nails and just claw at the painting. Your nails sink into the canvas as bits of paint, old, essentially rotting, um, chipping paint flakes away as you rip through this painting and you see behind it is a door. This is where we go. Oh, Rock. key! Oh, no, no, not this, not this key. Uh, no, not another word out of you, Virgil. Uh, yeah. Oh, ah! Uh, uh. While he's fumbling, I try, to, I try the door. It is locked. Okay. For God's sakes! Okay, okay, okay. And I'll tr- I'll take the key that's on Petrini's book, and I'll just pr- hope and pray that it works. As I will then. It works. <gasps> it is a skeleton key for this house, and it appears to open any of the doors. And it's just as quickly as you unlock it, the door slowly swings open, and you are caught off guard almost immediately by the sound of pure silence from within. Oof. As soon as all six of you step through the doorway behind the horrible painting of the weasel-like monstrosity, it slams shut behind you, and suddenly, quiet returns. The house no longer shakes. You do not feel the looming threat of the massive teeth and tendrils, and the stillness of the narrow, crooked staircase before you is unsettling against the contrast of the previous chaos of this house. It's almost as if the being that had once pursued you has no power in the lair of its captor. The rickety steps creep with each footfall as the walls close in more and more as you ascend to an even narrower hallway, shrouded in darkness. At the very end, a small wooden door barely visible in the blackness. So, here we go. Is there anyone? There there is, there is another map, yes. Oh, as we're walking slowly, I would like tap on your grims and say, now that you don't got that lady in your head, I, I, I don't trust myself with this. Here you go. So oh, I see. There's the hallway. Uh, mm. All right, I'm gonna leave it there then. Yeah. Once the again, last... you you see this door. It does also appear to be locked. But continue. the last time these hands were used by another to betray those, I'm just staring at my own hands. I carved. 3,000 names into my stone. I now have one more to carve. And I'd take my stone, I'd unchain the stone that I carry on my back, and for just a moment, I'd rest like the hilt of my shovel on my shoulder, and I'd carve in to the stone uh, Petrini. Um, Petrini guided us well. I let that witch take control of me and I destroyed the only outlet we had to communicate to get advantage on this horrible witch. I'm sorry, I haven't apologized yet. No, you do not need to apologize. This is, he will rest well. We mean it, you know it. You, it was not your fault. These things happen. It was my fault. This house is full of horrors. I will see to it, we will see to it, that he has a peaceful slumber in the mists. All of them. We still got here, so don't feel bad. We all lose control sometimes, Yorma. It happens. Right. 
rechain the sin stone or the stone of my sins to my back. I want to, before we start like walking down the hallway, I want to like listen to see if I could hear horrible weasels or skittering. Nothing's quiet. The walls are quiet around you. Almost peaceful, an eerie sense of peace. Maybe she decided to leave. Not even the sound of the creaking ancient wood of this house against the raging storm that you know is still brewing outside. No sounds of lightning, no sounds of rain, no sounds of thunder. Nothing but quiet. Evil permeates every section of this house. She's here. We've got to prepare ourselves. She was able to trap that terrible thing in the basement. We're in for quite a fight here. And a fight we'll have, and I'll call my cutlass to my hand. If there's one thing that Virgil's good for, it's eating hags. So I think we're well equipped for this job. Following Briggsy's lead, I draw my sword and raise my shield. I'm gonna like look at them and I'll say, we're going to kill this hag and I'm gonna draw my banjo <laughs> in like a similar way that's like I'm trying to be cool, but it's not at all cool. <laughs> Just like a blank, 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 as I'm tuning in. I'm <laughs> getting with this fucking heist. <laughs> I'll like reach to a little bottle at my side and pour a bit of like dark liquid into a cup and and just kind of knock it back. Um, and mm. I will use my symbiotic entity. So you'll start to see like kind oh, of shit. black, I don't know, dusty, spory kind of stuff like travel mm. up my, or I guess travel down from my throat and kind of like coat my coat my body and then just sort of, you know, disappear. Like, yeah. Like, almost emanate and float around her. You see these little bits of spore pollen. Jesus. The well, door is in front of you. You groom, I think you, I, I handed you the book with the key. Let's go. i take the book, I'll take the key, I'll head to the door, and if it's locked, well, I'll try it. If it's locked, I'd like to attempt to unlock it. You're easily able to unlock it with the skeleton key that um, that was attached to the trainee's book. You enter the final... Well, I'll wait for you to unpin it. So you can listen to what I'm saying. Oh, shit. You enter the final unexplored room of this horrid, crooked Fuck. house. And before you is the source of wickedness that brought about the ruin of the Lockwood family. The stench of decay is almost overwhelming as you see rotting, half-eaten dream pastries scattered all over the room amidst what looks like child-sized bones and clumps of hair of all manner of color and texture. There are small holes bored all over the walls of the space, and you see the stinking droppings of hundreds of vermin that coat the floor like a disgusting carpet. All of this is awash in the strange reddish-purple glow of humming runic circles and terrible otherworldly geometry etched all along the floors, walls, and ceilings at the center of which is one of the most horrific sights you've witnessed here. A large wooden stake is fastened to the creaky floor of the attic, and impaled upon it is the nude corpse of a woman with the arms bent into backwards, the arms bent into backwards and seemingly significant positions, holding a jagged knife in one hand and a silver and a shallow silver dish in the other, all strung together and held in place with, with sinewy twine. You see that this body has been decapitated, and where the head of Petunia Lockwood once was, is the skull of a goat crudely grafted to the putrid, headless neck. Oh, Despite the gyrating magic glow of the runic energy, the room is eerily quiet as you step inside. And although you expected to find the one called Vesla Browntooth here, you see no one besides the headless corpse. However, you feel a presence. You are not alone here. After several moments of taking in the horror of the attic, of the crooked house, you feel like you are being watched and turn around to see that your suspicions are correct. As you look up to the corner of the ceiling, you see the hag clinging to the pockmarked walls from behind like some sort of terrible reversed spider. Ugh! The gnarled face of a purple-skinned crone leers at you past a bent nose with a wart so huge at the end, it looks like the nose of a weasel. And as she bears her crooked grin, you notice that she has weasel-like features amidst her ancient grotesque form. From prominent brown front teeth to whiskers, to beady black eyes, to horns that look like rounded ears, to vermin-like claws. She wears a tattered brown dress with far too many pockets, 
but you can see you're stuffed with bones, teeth, hair, and even rotting flesh. You have but a moment to witness this horrific sight as the nearly levitating hag cackles and leaps down at you from above. I need everyone to roll for initiative. Oh, oh fuck! Well... Oh, 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 oh. oh I rolled okay. Uh, oh, can oh. you please put this there on the... Hell yeah, it. I can. Let's where would you like us to, to place? We uh, place yourself into the where you think you'd be. Her, she right? is right. in the far right. corner. Is that reasonable? Oh, no, she was behind us, right? So we, well, walked, we just we walked, okay. we walked underneath her, right? Oh, yeah. Sure. So she would have been. Yeah. Just put her in a at corner. The doorway. Yep. I don't care. As, I as Vesla Brown Tooth descends from the ceiling and all of her twisted, haggish, weasel glory, Lethica, it is your turn. Oh. Um, Lethica will probably say something oh. like Mystical and Shari. Just keep our turns really simple. I'm taking her out. Of yeah, the yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to just do. Uh, she's gonna bless everybody. Perfect. Love, uh, I have a, love it. Love okay. it. That gives what us what one d four. Uh, do I do I just roll? Make her, just make her a heal battery or something. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah think so you roll doing. anything. I think you just no, just for blessed. It's oh, just, we're blessed. What, Everyone's it, blessed. Yeah. I'm asking if it's one d four. That's it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Two all blessed. rolls. Like, uh, attack rolls and stuff. And saving uh, can you can you get rid of that? Attack roll and saving throws. What? Okay. One d four. Attack rolls and saving yep. throws. That's it. Yes, that's it. Uh, Your room. Yeah. Uh, I would look up at this hideous hag and say, "You used to me." Uh, and roll to attack. Uh, and I would um fucking. Uh, well, I will go into my mist form and channel the ancestors. Uh, the, the mists would appear about me. I'd attach the lantern to my shovel, uh, and you would be able to hear like a haunting wail around me uh, as I strike out against this hag. Um, uh, and then... I think that was a four. I moved it, but I'm I'm pretty sure it was a four. Um, ten. Uh, four misses. Ten, ten misses. to hit. Okay. Yep. For AC sixteen. Okay. Right. I'd strike out and just totally in my fury just miss. She looks towards you. You watch as her head slowly turns towards you, and she lets out a horrific cackle. <laughs> The mother watches over me, and you watch as she opens up her um, opens up her robe, and where you would expe- expect to see the horrific, um, undulating cleavage of this large hag woman, you do in fact see just that. But you also see the human hands of filthy Jasper as, his cl- as he climbs his way out of her bosom, ah! and he is going to launch himself toward you. Ah! I need you to make a Constitution saving throw for me, please. What the hell? Yeah, what the fuck is this shit? Wait, where's filthy Jasper? He just climbed out of um, Vesla Browntooth's cleavage and launched himself at your room. Oh, and here 20. you can put this on you. Put it oh, on that's me. what I was. <laughs> yeah, gross. I <laughs> uh, was what? You 24. Know what you're gonna find 24. in there. Do you want to like, you, you feel as filthy grid. Jasper slams into you and begins to oh, use his humanoid penis. hands. His fingers unnaturally long as he attempts to, as he attempts to burrow himself Sweet inside of your chest. God. You're <sighs> able to, you're able to knock him off, but he is still attached to, to you. He he did not, however, um, he like was not able to burrow into your chest. Uh, so Sorry, that is exactly. Jericho's turn. Uh, yep. I am going uh, to look at him and say, uh, uh, Jorgrim, uh, uh, good good luck with that weaselman. Uh, and you're inspired. Uh, and then oh, I am going I to... Do. I am going to... Um, I'm going to uh, look at her and uh, and I will say... Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do this. Fuck it. And I'm going to say... Uh, um, if my friend Lethica uh, uh, pulled off her, her mask, uh, it would be extremely painful uh, for you. And I'm going to cast Bane on her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I roll a natural 17. Okay, no, she succeeds. Oh. So I fail. That's my turn. 
I think that's a, just a permanent. Uh, and with that, <laughs> it is her turn. She is going to look towards all of you as she as she begins to laugh and laugh and laugh. You see that this effigy of Mother Night that is um, near the center of this room is glowing bright with what appears to be an almost darkened, uh, putrid moonlight uh, as she calls forth the magic from her and she is going to let out a wail. And as she does, from her mouth pour out weasel after weasel after weasel, and she's going to call forth a weasel storm. Did you go? Or weasel swarm, I don't know. Is this a life no, yeah. if you will? No, this is, this is her oh. action. Where would you I like these? I have yeah. like these Mary's Oh, go I was, first. thought I was monsters one. Well, that's gonna happen, so just keep those. That's fine, okay. I'll, I'm happy to go uh, after yeah, sorry, oh, just sorry, swap us. I'll just swap us in the fucking order. That's fine. That's fine, go for it. Oh, okay. All right, just make your make your. Um, so you need to spread the weasels out? Is that what? No, that, that will happen after Mary. Oh, yeah, make it move. threw me for a loop. Um, so what I would do is seeing all of this happen and seeing her up in the corner. I would, uh, having drawn my sword and shield, I would look at her and say, uh, "She is here, even now. And she will not let me go." And I will use the. Uh, sorry, I have to look at the item. Uh, the Duchess of Sin uh, effect on her. I will take 1d4 damage to give myself advantage on the attack. Yeah, I hope it's a 4. <laughs> it's a 2. So I take 2 damage. Half, half. Uh, so I am wrapped in, again, the light you described earlier, not Lathander's rose light, this velvety, sexy, lust like light. And, and it's the first time well, that you, velvet light. you don't oh, use it. No one hears me mention him, right? It's very much her. And I strike at this uh, at this horrific hag with advantage. Yeah, it's gonna be a, it's still gonna be an 18 to hit. That hits. Let's fucking go. So I get an extra d4 of radiant damage. And then I'm gonna smite as well for my last spell slot. Let me actually. Well, not terrible. That's going to be uh, 19 plus, I think it's 7. 19 plus 7 is 26. Uh, 26 points of damage, and the smite, again, you've seen me smite before. It's not the same rose and gold colored light that Lathander gives me. It's a deeper velvety, uh, you know, bloody red. You do a significant amount of damage as the. Uh as you let forth a, uh, a slash from your blade, uh, doing damage to yourself, imbuing you with that rage that the Duchess seems to have on you. Um, as you deal a significant amount of damage to her, she lets out a shriek, and you see where her wounds open up. It's almost like a globulous blood begins to drip out. Ah, that's not good for anybody. That's my turn. And then and from her mouth, that, weasels. The weasels. Each one of them is <laughs> going to attach themselves to one of you. There should be one weasel to one oh, person. Fuck. And they're all going to attempt to hit you. First one on Farron. I would use my reaction when it enters that space. Um, my spores, my halo of spores would poof out in its face. And what happens? Um... <laughs> <laughs> it kills That's weasels. Whistled. Yeah, it's actually it's uh, uh, weasels. Yeah, it's actually just deal. So uh, that mark. uses my reaction to deal necrotic damage to one creature you can see when it moves into a space. Um, if it fails a con saving throw. What's the con saving throw? Roll a natural nine. Fifteen. Fifteen. Oh, uh, so a nine. Okay. <laughs> um, so so it, it is immediately <laughs> incinerated as it coughs on the spore. I, no, not incinerated. It coughs on the spores, and you watch as his eyes go a, a milky. <laughs> A milky white as the spores oh. poison it and it chokes on its own tongue and dies. Oh. Isn't that great? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that little uh, flavor tidbit. <laughs> Jericho, the one on you is going to roll natural two. Uh, Briggsy, it's going to be a 15 plus five, so 20 to hit on you. Okay. Oof. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, 12 for Marius. I block with my shield. Uh, nine for Lethica, and a 24 to hit on your crew. Oh, well, that does mm-hmm. fine. Nine so for Lethica? Like, oh, yeah, it's fine. It looks like 17. two hit. I think so. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm 16. sure a nine does not hit Lethica. Uh, so, Briggsy, you're going to take seven points of damage, and Yorgrim, you're going to take six points of damage. 
um, piercing damage as these vermin sink their teeth into you and begin to um, and begin to feast upon your flesh. Uh, and that's the that is her turn summoning those. Let me see if there's oh, and she can do um, and she can do uh, she's gonna do claw attacks. Who's she closest to? Probably Marius. 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 Probably. Uh, she's sure. going to move towards Marius and she's going to make her claw attack against Marius. 20 to hit. Oh, Ooh. that does it. Uh, and so that is going to be a. I can. Eight points of slashing damage yep. as she sinks her claws into you. Yeah, yeah. Um, who is within five feet of her? Uh, nobody just else. Marius. Marius. Just Marius. Uh, there's well, some rats. But... I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Me? Yes. Done. I would have moved within five DC feet 14. to hit her. I don't did know you, if that matters. Did you attack her? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you I did. attacked her yes. originally. Oh, yeah. I need, sorry, yeah. I need you to make one as well. Uh, 20. Okay. We just know that Jasper. Because he's 14. If it's, ha- if it's half damage, I will use my reaction to take no damage. It is no damage. Okay. Uh, eight, well, 18, natural. You 18. are easily able to withstand it. It's, as you stand next to her, you, you see these tiny vermin-like m- mouths dart in and out of her clothing and Bop, gnaw and bite at you. You imagine Ugh. that being this close to her, without a strong amount of mobility and dexterity, you may succumb. Uh, Good thing Marius is literally never scared. Just <laughs> uh, and Briggsy. I can't. I can't. Uh, oh fucking weasel! <laughs> uh, and I will, as I'm kind of uh, taking this hit, you'll see sort of you'll hear sort of like this 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 dark jazz music play as <laughs> yes. I'll uh, as I'll kind of shimmer and 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 there's almost some sort of the shadow ver- a couple of shadow versions of me start to kind of whisk out of me as I cast a uh, mirror image on myself Ooh, um, let's go and uh I will then say, get, get, uh, actually, no, I'm going to stay right there. And I'll say, I'm coming for you, hag. And I'm going to cast, uh, I'm going to throw uh, the, the evil eye at her and Love she'll sort that. of, this, this like glyph of like neon pink light will appear on her as I cast uh, Hex Blades Hex or whatever the fuck it's called. All right. Hex Blades Hex. <laughs> you do hex that. Hex of the Hex, Warrior Hex. Baron, what do you do? Um, I, do we get the sense that like, <laughs> the horrific hag circle in the center that we should not step on that. I, you wouldn't get that sense. You imagine that you could walk on it. No, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I never mean trust that you the first time. It, it is carved in, it is imbued with magic. You know that it is doing something, but it's not like some kind of liquid that you're going to disrupt it or you're going to cause any issues. Okay, with. I didn't want to like step in it and like lose a foot in a portal or something no. weird. <laughs> Cautious about things on the ground. <laughs> like always. <laughs> like always. Like always. Um, I, um, in that case, would, um, you know how I do. I'm gonna uh, point my gnarled finger out at the hag across the room, um, and you'll see the the black kind of spores extend uh, over and and crawl up from the ground at her feet and start to swirl around her for chill touch. Okay. The old Victoria special. The old Victoria special, (laughs) that's exactly right. Okay. Uh, 19, 21, 22, 23, 24 to hit. 24 hits. Okay, and I get an extra d6 from my symbiotic entity. Five and three, uh, 13 points of damage. Okay. Uh, necrotic damage. Necrotic, you said. Seems to do the same amount. Fuck you. <laughs> that would have been the old shepherd special. Yeah, she heals. God damn it. Uh, you you watch as a strange uh, a strange ghost white fungus begins to pop out of the earth around her feet, and you can see the chilled air that emanates from this fungus as it um, as they almost freeze her feet into place, doing a bit of damage. 
Alrighty. And that but... is Lethica's turn. Lethica, he brings you. Oh, yes. <laughs> you are hurt. Uh, is anyone hurt? Is anyone hurt? Nah, I took a hit. Uh, I, I think that she'll, uh, she's going to use healing some, fuck, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot I'm sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, Marius looks pretty bad. <laughs> All Mary, right, no! Marius is bloodied. No! Uh, I'm she bruised. Will, she will uh, put her bruised. hand on, uh, she will put her me. hand on Marius and cast Cure Wounds. So she's gonna walk up to him? Uh, yeah, she'll walk up to him. Oh, I guess she'll get- Yeah, yeah, fuck uh, it. Oh my god. Fuck it. Fools! Hops over the dead body with a goat yeah. head on the floor. Oh, my. I'm good. <laughs> okay, uh, do what you gotta do. Healing touch for yep. uh, nine points of healing. Oh, absolutely worth it. Ready to go uh, shit. And also, uh, <laughs> uh, weasel opportunity attack. Perfect. Fucking god mode activated. Uh, Let's ready go. To fucking 17? Shit. Yep. What? 17? 17 hit. Oh, uh, that hits, yeah. Yikes! Okay. <laughs> oh, no! It's all. It's a weasel wallop it is you going got to there. do a total of four piercing damage oh, as it okay. sinks its teeth into her. Okay. Uh, Yorker. All right. I would attack the hag once more again. <laughs> Completely like, fuck you, filthy Jasper. <laughs> fuck you, other weasel. <laughs> I, attack the, I attack the hag. Wow, well, great. Over here. I, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. 16? Eight. Nope, that misses. I tried. At that point, it is Filthy Jasper's turn, as he is going to once again try and burrow into your chest. I need you to. Oh, uh, so fucked uh, up. I need you to make a da, 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 Constitution saving throw. Ugh. Well. Goodbye, chest. Fourteen. Oh, you're good. Fourteen meets it. Oh, oh. able to shrug it off. It feels like some of his uh, some oh. of his nails on Fuck. his human hands are able to pierce into your flesh yeah. as it begins to tear the skin apart. But you swat him away as a thin line of blood appears and begins to uh, the blood begins to drip Jesus, down your chest. Not even close, oh. you filthy beast. <laughs> but he holds on. I don't ah. like it. I don't ah. like Jericho. It. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, look at, uh, Vesla and say, uh, oh, stop if you've, you've heard, uh, this one before. Um, uh, a, a weasel walks into a bar and the bartender says, wow, I've never seen a weasel before. What can I get you? Uh, pop goes the weasel. <laughs> <laughs> And I guess he's laughed her on me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is what is the spell? What is the thing? Uh, wisdom, wisdom fifteen. <laughs> I'm gonna use a uh, twist of dread. At the very end oh. of the day. At the very <laughs> least, you'll get your <laughs> Fourteen? Jorgen falls over. Fifteen. Yeah. Fifteen is the DC. Okay. So she lets out a horrific <laughs> cackle as the magic overcomes her. She almost shrugged it off, was but was not able to. She falls to the ground in a fit of horrific is laughter. Is she prone? Yeah. Uh, and she's she's prone okay. and she's laughing. I'm gonna and this then uh, I will uh, look over. Um, uh, I'll look at uh, Briggsy and I'll say, uh, "Interior crocodile." <laughs> 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 I give you, I give you uh, uh, inspiration. Plucking on my back. Thank you, Marius. It's your turn. You watch as she falls to the ground. Um, oh, I actually, I need you to make the uh, the dexterity saving throw, both you and your grim, as it was her turn, to see if you are oh. pierced by the. Uh, uh, I the got a fifteen. That pass is you're fine. Or the I think they all have to on her they, turn. They keep doing that too. Oh, they go on her turn. They go on her turn. Okay. Um, so then if she is on the ground in uh, 15, 15. a prone state, 15, 15. I strike at her with past. extreme prejudice. You do. With you advantage? With a, yes. So monsters one is Jasper. Yes, okay. monsters one is Got Jasper. It. Confusion. As he attempts to burn. 16 to hit? Uh, that oh, hits. That plus is crazy. Plus Oh, yeah. I definitely hit. Uh, sorry. Does uh, bless work on damage too? No, oh, no, no, no. It's just, just a hit. the attack and saving throws. Oh, it's uh, I was being part a, of inspiration that does damage. I was being a uh, wiener. Uh, that's not bad. That's gonna be a fourteen plus eight, which is uh, twenty-two damage. Yeah. 
I've rolled almost max. And when she takes max. damage, just to mean, just to be she fair, can she can re-roll it. it, and so she'll still be prone until she can stand. I rolled a natural seven, so she does not. She does not succeed. It is a funny uh, joke. On her, on her turn, does she get to roll it again? Uh, at the end of her turn, yes. That is Marius' whole turn, and I am, and it will be advantage that destroying this lovely hag. Um, oh, because you guys shouldn't have taken that anyway because it wasn't her turn yet. Now it is her turn. All the weasels are going to attack the person, the person that they're on. Symbiotic. Uh, Good luck. Uh, that weasel is uh, obliterated, whichever one is next to you. That one's going to miss. That one's going to miss. That one's going to hit. So one, two, three. Oh. Um, and there's only one left, right? I'm counting three. We have th- four. Four. Four, yes. Yeah, so two missed, and well, three missed. So the one's gonna hit Briggsy. What do you mean three missed? And she killed one. one if two. there are four left, there were six, and she's still. Oh, that should have been on you. So there you are, moved there it should before. Be no, I moved left. it because it should have spawned on your room because your room was here. No, because I had this one there, was mine. Yes. No, this one was no, mine. No, that there one was, was one on Lethica. This that one was one was you Briggsy's. killed the one was in you instantly. Yeah, yeah, and there was one on Lethica right, over so. here as well. Wait, yeah. If I killed two over here. here. My right, Lethica. Those are the two you. that are dead. Oh, I see. I You're see. going That's to take Brizzy's. three points of piercing damage as um, as this uh, weasel uh, chews into you and begins to devour her. Uh, I didn't and even she notice. And going to attempt to uh, <laughs> devour there. her. And I, I rolled, I fuck you not, a four and a three. So no, she is still laughing. Wow. What does that sound like? <laughs> so it went from him RPing and it being a real laugh. You fucking <laughs> And then I'll look and I'll say, well, well, well thank you. I, I wasn't sh- I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to use that joke again. <laughs> I thought it was the right opportunity. Uh, She's looking bloody. <laughs> okay. Because fucked her up. Uh, Yo, let her have it. I Come will on. hustle over here. And you have Do bargains for <laughs> I guess you don't have anything on you. No, I do. No, oh. he's got one. This one's in melee range. Um, it is uh, 18. Uh, yeah. Let's see, who, let's see who it targets. What? He's got mirror image. Oh, that's right. It, it yeah. Dispels one of my shadows. Yeah. Oh, nice. As one of the As weasels like, uh, leaps, uh, leaps uh, towards uh, your, your moving forms and sinks its teeth into nothing but shadow. Um, I will uh, in the then take my hand and then do this, and a big spectral pin will stab through her as I cast X on her, uh, and I will roll to attack. Yep. That's got to hit. Oh, advantage. Good damage. Plus Here a go. Yeah, That's no. a hit. Uh, so I am rolling three of these bad boys. Bum, bum, bum. Mm. Uh, that's terrible. That's, you know, pretty bad. Uh, ah, it could be worse. So that is could have been a three. Um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen points of damage. And that is my turn. Okay. Um, you, this pin slides in. You can hear the way that it it slides against flesh and bone. You hear mm. the sounds of popping organs as it pierces all the way through her. All Ugh. the while, as she cackles malevolently on the floor, blood beginning to pool out around her back as she takes a significant yeah. amount of damage. No, thank you, <laughs> Baron. Hard pass. Um, I would rush. She can roll. Um, hmm? she can roll. Mm. Advantage. Two. Advantage, right? <laughs> oh. Advantage. Fifteen plus two, seventeen. <laughs> That'll do it. Hey. <laughs> the laughing stops as she looks towards you, and she begins to squeal and squeak a strange weaselly noise erupting from her mouth. What's that? <laughs> I'm not doing animal noises at your request. Your <laughs> She's not getting another turn. Come on, kill it. Come on, come on, come on. I don't think I can get into her. I mean, you got some long range thing or kill that. I would, I would say you can. Yeah, you you can. can like just get close enough, and I'll say you, you have enough. Okay. 
Um, so I would rush, ignoring the weasel to my side, I would rush towards her as far, you know, I think maybe, let's say to there, and I would just swing my long staff out at her. Um, and, are you and taking an opportunity attack from a weasel? I'm going to take an opportunity attack from the weasel. Yes, you are. And you are going to be hit by this weasel. Gosh. <laughs> Freaking weasels. Gosh. And you're going to take a total of four points of piercing damage. Oh, gosh. And the weasel sinks its teeth into your calf. Gosh. Fucking oh, weasels. Weasels. Okay. Oh, um, weasels. <laughs> Again? Fucking weasels. <laughs> Um, so I will swing my my um, my skull shaped staff out at her over my friends and and try to just a- attack her with the the antlers on that staff. Um, and... Who's looking rough? Anybody? I'm okay. I look I look sturdy. Orcs never look rough. Well. Twelve misses. Where they always do. They just look like a wolf. Lithica uh, is going to give a nice, who is she next to? A nice shoulder massage to everybody. Uh, she's in range of everybody. She's in range of everybody. Uh, to uh, Briggsy. And she's going to cast uh, Cure Wounds. Oh, wow. Uh, 13. 13 points of healing. That's it. To everyone, right. she's still no, prone because oh. it hasn't been returned. Okay, returning. well, <laughs> I will then roll <laughs> at a minus... Oh, my die, that's why. Uh, a that minus something, like a minus four or a minus five to try and just really fucking hit her hard. Um, all right, well, I hope the other one's better. It's not. It's not very close. What is... It's like Max is like... Five. Yeah, no, that's that yeah. Um, As once again, I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw for me, please. Or a constitution saving throw. You see 14? All right, I want to fail. Uh, at this this point, uh, Filthy Jasper is able to begin to burrow into your chest. Oh, to yeah. take Ooh, almost max damage. 11 points of necrotic damage as he begins to burrow into your chest. We knew you well. You you watch as his, as his nails rip in, and, and he begins to rip. You see um, the skin on Yorgrim's chest tear apart with a loud, um, like a loud liquidy uh, like no. slurp almost as the, the pieces of skin <laughs> flaps are pulled apart from each other and blood begins to spill. <laughs> you can see the, the white fluffy fat that resides within your chest. <laughs> and Filthy Jasper licks his lips as he stares into you. Filthy Jasper's a filthy oh. jerk. That's true. Uh, Jericho. <laughs> That's um, true. Am I able to target Filthy Jasper? You can try. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go to uh <laughs> Andrew from back. <laughs> I'm gonna play my banjo. <laughs> and I can't cast mine spike. Uh it's an intelligence saving throw. My sliver? My sliver. My sliver. Fifteen? Uh that is enough. He pa- he passes. And nothing okay. happens? No. Oof, I think that's uh, how can't work, right? Uh, I am bashing these horrific weasels <laughs> away with my shield, and I kick one away, and then I stomp my foot on this hag's throat as I attempt to, uh, you know, finish her off there. Right. <laughs> oh, and then with oh, that... Oh, she's still, she's still prone. She's still prone. With that, I'm I also going it. to, uh, in the music, heal you with my bonus oh. action. Oh. Oh, thank God I got a, a 17 level. to hit. That hits? How, mu- how much do you uh, have? I'm going to Sorry. Use the right die. There you go. Oof. <laughs> Eight points of damage. Yikes. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. I used up all my spell slots. <laughs> you go plus seven here. Is that a one? Yeah. Eleven points of healing. One D eight plus seven. Oh yeah, because you're a long sword. I love that. <laughs> Just eight points of damage. As I'm as I'm shield bashing away weasel after weasels, I strike the hag. You, you are able to slice into her, and she almost relishes in this as she, she stands up, uh, almost standing into your blade and pushing right. her, her heaving bosom directly into your face. Oh, and she is going to make, or well, all the weasels that are alive are going to attack whoever they're on. Oh, gosh. Uh, 
How many weasels are alive? Four. Four, and then so one on Jericho is going to miss. Yeah, one is going to move towards uh, Farron in the back, and I'm assuming you're doing your thing. There's Lefica, your not grim to the weasel. Okay. Uh, they got a natural one, so it's not going to hit you anyway. The jerk. And then, and, and then natural sixteen plus five, so that'll hit whoever the other one. Lefica. So there are only three weasels left. Yeah. Okay. Four. Four, four. Oh, four. four okay. weasels. Roll another one. So two will hit. So well, you just tell me who they're hitting. One of those would definitely be big, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. this one was one's on you. Yorgrim and one's on Lethica. This okay. one was so roll damage yeah. for Lethica and I will... I will uh, Lethica is going to take six points of damage. Ooh, and Yorgrim is going to take uh, three points of damage. Mm. And then it's uh, her and turn. And then she is going to... This I will use my... I'll kind of blow a yellow spore and as it touches her it'll like sprout out into like a lichen-y kind of thing on her skin. And she has to roll against it? Yes. Con 15. 15. Roll 15. I only have two left so I'm not going to use them if she fails. I rolled a, I rolled a 5. <laughs> plus 3 so I won't do it. And I get double oh, damage six. while my symbiotic entity is... Whoa. It's oh. only 4 so I'm not excited. <laughs> okay so 4 uh Four necrotic damage. That's not bad. Four to four. That's my she, she is starting to look really rough. Um, but she is going to she's going to lick back some blood that begins to drip out of her mouth. And as she does, you see rows of crooked, rotting teeth. Yeah. And she's going to do um, her weasels are already out. Uh, she doesn't need to cast spells, so she's gonna make two claw attacks on you, Marius. Okay. Uh, the first one is going to hit. The second one is going to miss. Okay. Um, and so she. There's seven points of slashing damage. Oh, and she got it. slashes into you. Um, and I need anyone who is within five feet of her, so anyone who's been able to attack her at melee needs to make right? a dexterity saving throw. Um, so that would be you as well, Farron. Oh, 17? Saving throw. Uh, Everyone DC except 14. for Jericho and, and Lefica. Yes. Yeah. 23. 20. 20. Uh, I think I fail. Yeah. Ten. Okay, you do fail. Um, <laughs> as these weasel heads begin to lash out at you, you're going to take 11 points of necrotic damage. Um, <clears throat> as they begin to drain, drain your blood, Holy you are going shit. to fall over prone as they are gnawing and gnashing at you. Bam. You're overcome <laughs> by a swarm of weasels spilling out of her, oh, out of her cloak. Uh, bad luck with these rodents. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it is Briggs' turn. Yeah, fuck, get the weasels! And I'm like trying to like fight them off, and I'm just gonna try to get up, use half my movement, and I'll say, all right, that's it. Uh, cutlass, let's do this! And I, the uh, a bunch of glyphs on my cutlass will start to glow as the cursed blade will come alive, and I will use my action mechanically and cast Booming Blade uh, oh, shit. as my action. And I don't think I have any other bonus actions left. Uh, I still have concentration on hacks. I'll come down with my with my cutlass and make an attack. She's not prone She's anymore. She's not prone anymore. Oh! So close. Uh, 19. Close, so. With the Hex Blade's Curse, I crit on 19. No! Oh! Oh, she's, she's about to be eviscerated. Let's go! Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. God. So 10. Dirty. 15. 18. Uh, 21. 22. Uh... Plus, so 28, 30 points of damage. It's a little bit of damage. How much? 30 points. How would you like to do that? <laughs> oh! Uh, just, I mean, literally as violently and as gruesomely and as horrifically voodoo cursed as possible. Cut her head off, just, man. Just cut her. I want to like, uh, like not even, I, I want to come in like, uh, I forget what, what movie that was, but like where it comes in like this. Oh, the monk's yeah. robe is cut. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it slides yeah. down it's, the body. It's a monk's robe. Cut. Oh yeah, what movie was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know the movie, or but I know that's what's going on. You, her shoulder you down do that here. as you slice through her and at first it looks like nothing has happened. She lets out, she throws her head back and she cackles. The movement of doing so 
moves, the flesh that has just been cut in two, as you see a thin red line encircling her from shoulder to torso. As she looks down in horror and then back at all of you, as she croaks out the words, she will win. And as she says this, her body begins to slide as her eyes go completely blank. Her torso hits the floor with a loud thud. And for a second, silence. And that's a filthy Jasper. Filthy Jasper, burrowing himself into Yorgrim's chest, realizes what has happened and quickly removes himself and shoots into one of the holes in the walls and disappears with a strange skittering sound. Can I, t- like, attempt to grab him? Sure, the DC is too high for you to make it. Oh, okay. You are unable to hold on to filthy Jasper. He's covered uh, in your sickening blood. What about the other weasels? Jasper. Hmm? What about the other weasels? The other weasels seem to have been controlled by her. You watch as all of them, one after another, falls, de- falls dead upon the ground. And for a moment, quiet. You've done it. Well done, Briggsy. Well and done. And then the sound of footsteps on the stairs. And then the sound of the jingling of the door handle as it moves and moves and moves, but the door is locked. You didn't lock it when you walked into the room, but it is locked now, and you hear a familiar voice. I will have your teeth. I will have it. Oh, fuck. Just wait. I'm coming. As the sound of Kellen can be heard from the other side of the door, the rune ignites and Petrini's journal begins to hum as it flings itself to the ground. There's no writing in there, I didn't write it. Oh. But it, it, it uh, moves open until the words read, ritual, now, danger, hurry. I forgot to do it. And you see, it's it's still out. glowing in the middle of this room is the ritual symbol that Thessala Browntooth had been using. What do you do? Kill the hag with free Kellen. You must want us to finish, to complete or continue uh, our Jericho ritual. Jericho, roll to... a, an intelligence throw because you have, or uh, intelligence check because you have uh, what you have inside of you. To entrap Kellen beneath us. Uh, you can us. roll at advantage, Ooh. by the way. Yeah, I'm not going to do that die. Let me make sure this is the good one. It is. It's got the, the three-pronged. That's not great. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to use my inspiration. I'm going to use my player inspiration. Nope. Uh, it was faded. It's a 10. Uh, oh, I actually may have gotten a 10. My you heart. are level 4, so the DCs aren't crazy. That's true. Uh, they will get there, but not right now. Intelligence check? Uh, yeah, no, I actually got a 10. Wow! I got a 10 on my, you, my high I, You my look at this roll. thing, your, your head almost jolting from corner of this arcane rune to the next without your control is, is if... Uh, as if uh, Jericho, or not Jericho, as if Virgil is almost controlling the movement of your neck. As you as you begin been to, as you begin to count one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, realizing that the points of this of of this symbol on the ground are the same as the amount of spirits, mementos that you have in your possession. There's. Uh, there's a point uh, 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 for the the symbol that we just we should put uh, our memento at each cor- at, at each point. I so, immediately following your lead, I I take so the is sword. It, is it like a hexagram? If it's six points, it is a strange arcane symbol. That okay, has six points. Okay. Or just the harp so, cord. Uh, yeah, I would immediately I'll follow put, your I'll, lead. I'll put, I'll put, is there some kind of order that we need to do? Or we just put it down. Remember what it said, though. A memento, one of theirs and one of ours. Well. Well, I think that, that us bearing it is, is our souls. Then let's go. Let's go, Will. I'll <laughs> kind of take the doll out of my pack. And I, I, I don't care for these kinds of, of, of runic symbol, but I'm fine to do it if it's going to help all these fine folk. And I'm going to place, uh, and it's like, Petrini, we're doing it for you and, 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 and the fellow that you worship. And I'll place uh, Petrini's uh, prayer beads at one of the corners of this runic symbol. Right. And for Sally. That's her name, you right? notice that the moment you place it, the light begins to grow stronger. For Gaston and the kids. And of course, poor young Arthur. The young lord. Cheers to you, the crooked man. Oh, Eustace. I'll put that. It's coming. Lethica with... Oh, Lethica also, please. 
Does she say anything? Just place it uh, she'll just place it and say something cryptic. <laughs> what did she have again? She had the... She, she had the pliers. She had the pliers. Oh, pliers. She would yeah. say how the, this should be cast away. Pull on this, bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the voice of Kellen screaming at you for your teeth from the side of from the side of the door. From the other side of the door, and as you place the final uh, the final memento, quiet. And then the sound of a loud cracking noise from very deep within the earth. A deep rumbling, guttural cracking noise as the house itself, the crooked house, jolts from one side to the next as if the very earth beneath your feet is moving. A crooked house no more as the way it sinks down into the foundation writes itself, no longer leaning to the side. In the very center of this circle, where it had been this horrific form of Petunia's body decaying with the goat skull on top of it. You begin to see it shake and move as the body becomes to de- is, as the body begins to decay unnaturally. And out of all of the mento- mementos directly in front of you, you begin to see the spirits rise around you. Spirit of Sally, Spirit of Arthur, Gaston, of Eustace, of Katrina. All five of them look out at you and they smile. No, they don't speak. They look towards you. You see a glint of what looks like a tear rolling down Katrini's face as he smiles to you a full smile of straight, clean, fresh teeth. Eustace looks towards you and his head no longer crooked as he nods to you and takes his top hat and tips it to you, smiles, a mouth full of clean, fresh, whole teeth. Though still corporeal, you look towards Arthur and Sally. They run to each other and embrace in their spiritual forms. As they both begin to cry on each other, you begin to see Arthur's spiritual body plumping up, no longer sickly, no longer emaciated. Sally, her body no longer bent and twisted as it was the way it had been when it was pulled into the back. And then slowly, it begins to rise, the form of Petunia Lockwood, out of her memento and into her slowly decaying flesh in front of you. As her mouth opens to, to speak, rows and rows of decaying, rotten teeth begin to spill out, no tongue present, nothing to form words except for a horrific scream as you watch her body twist and jolt her arms go up headless above her, the symbol of the goat skull not free from her, from the stump of her neck, as she begins to twist, not in peace like the others, as she slowly begins to deteriorate and disappear. All of the spirits around you watch this, they look at you, and for a moment you see on Arthur and Sally's face, and even Eustace's face, a look of sadness as they see what could have been the woman they had known before she had before she had succumbed to the the torment and the influence of Vesla Browntooth. No longer present in this room, you feel Petunia gone. Whatever fate awaits her, as you watch, you um, you Yorgrim are familiar with this. As the maiden comes for them all as the mist claims the soul that would be hers. You watch as the body of Petunia Lockwood is succumbed in that, it succumbs to that strange blue and green mist until nothing lies on the floor but her tattered clothing and the skull of the goat. Reaching out towards you, you see the spirits of the other five reach towards you as if to embrace you as they slowly begin to fade. You then, you then realize that Aside from the crack, there is no more sound of Kellen, of the crooked teeth behind that door. But there is another sound, a whipping, whooshing sound coming from directly outside of this place. The rain having stopped one window to the side, you all rush to it and peer out as you see what appears to be the form of a woman atop a broom as it flies past the moon. 
and the moon, with its crooked, wicked grin, stares down at all of you and smiles. But you have done it. Whatever that was, whoever that was, flies deeper into the night until they are but merely a speck. As you stand in what once was the crooked house, what do you do? Is that it? Is she gone? I don't hear her anymore. I, 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 I cannot begin to imagine. What, what, what are we supposed to do now? We cannot stay here. This, this, this place is tainted. I've seen a lot of fucked up shit in my day. That's probably the most fucked up thing I've ever seen. We need to make sure that, I mean, is it done? What about the thing downstairs? How can we know? Uh, we must, we must check. Virgil will be hopping around, like, looking very intently, his eyes, like, following the lines of what the remnants of the runic pattern. If there's, if it's, mar- if it's etched into the thing. I don't it, know if it, it, it appears to be carved. Into yeah, and so basically you'll see uh, Virgil kind of fly up and he'll fly around and you can see that he's like, his eyes are tracing this symbol. I would say over the course of time, he is able to commit the entire shape to memory. Well, that's ominous. <laughs> um, I would say, um, who looked into the amber? You. Anyone you. who had looked okay. into the amber was able to see that as this entity flew uh, flew past the window, it was clearly some kind of horrific beast hybrid similar to what you'd seen in the amber. Oh, its mouth full of rows of crooked, horrible teeth. Wait, was it a witch on a broom? Yes. It looked, well, it was It was some Something kind of creature thing on a broom. Oh, oh, oh. For, as much, for as much as we may have succeeded, we failed in one regard, and I think it's whatever was in that obelisk has escaped. I don't know that it could have gone any other way, though. If we killed her and she was what was trapping it in there, she was bound to get out, right? Well, at least there can't be any more harm done to the any infants or childrens and Folsons. And you look down at the mementos, and that strange, eerie glow that they all had is no longer there. The house below you is quiet. Well, if we, Jericho, I think you're right for now. I don't think it's the last we'll see of her. And I certainly don't think she's going to stop doing whatever she was doing. I believe we brought them peace, but her... With the, the pet or which has familiar? for her familiar still lives in the walls. Oh yeah. Feels the Jasper is still here. I don't know about you all, but I'd like to get a little bit of rest in my weary non bones. And those of you that that don't sleep, you feel exhaustion and you feel the need to lay your head down and get rest. That creature's still here, as Yorgrim says, I'd like to burn this godforsaken mansion to the ground. I think I wouldn't stop you if you did, but maybe we should get some rest. Take watch, protect each other from that thing, and then move on in the daytime. I think I that'd agree. be mighty fine. Not this friend. No, I, I suggest we perhaps, now that the, sto- the storm is, is, is gone, is yes, gone. Yes, the storm seemed to, ab- to have abated. Now that the weather is all cleared up, Maybe out in a f- I, I normally rest in a field. Out in his house. I'd be happy outdoors as well. Agreed. It doesn't take you long to make your way through the house, and you do so in an almost quiet reverence for what has happened here, what has happened to these people. Feeling a sense of not necessarily joy, but accomplishment, having known that you at least did some kind of good, but worrying for the future and worrying what it means that they seem to have just dissipated into nothingness. Where did they go? What happened to Petunia? All of these questions somehow unanswered. As you make your way through the house, it creaks and moans against your footfalls, but no more sounds of the slamming of the crooked man against the side of the house. No more, no more toothy vines chasing after you. No more bees, no more dream pastries. The house is quiet. Almost a different house. Though you'll never forget what has happened here. 
as you make your way outside and shut the door behind you. It looks different now, no longer crooked, upright, having fully nestled into its foundation as you set up camp outside in the field. Not too far, just close enough to be able to do what you need to the next day, but far enough that you don't feel like you're sleeping beneath its horrible gaze. Is there anything you want to do before you go to sleep? I got out of them. I would, uh... I think I would just look up at the house and I'll say, uh... I'm not sure we're gonna burn it. I mean, you already tried, right? I, I did. I lit all those dead plants and I should have gone on. But I don't know if that was the magic or the house itself. So, we might need to find another way to get that little fucking weasel out of that house another way tomorrow. Well, it's probably just a couple more hours and Philip will be back. We can ask him what the hell this was. Well, at the very least, given now that we've done what we've done, I'm certainly not opposed to trying to burn it again. But, rest first. Maybe, after we did that great thing, and maybe that was, maybe Vessel Browntooth is the real name of Mother Midnight, and we, we've won and we'll get that 27 copper piece reward. Or whatever our hearts desired. I am very tired. <laughs> I'm tired myself. Do we see any, like, can we, I forget, like, what the, can we see a sky here? It is, at this point, what would essentially be the dead of night in, an, in a zone of eternal night, so it is near pitch black outside. So no, like, stars or anything like that? Uh, you see the faint glints of stars, but um, I would say at this point you would have seen that there are two moons. One that seems to be stationary, the Hag Moon. The mm -hmm. other one that seems to dip back and forth along the horizon. Um, and at this point, it is fully below the horizon, causing uh, complete darkness. And so it is it is that moon that seems to illuminate the night sky, and it is gone. Well, I'm new to sleep, but when I rest, oh, I think I'm gonna, I'll, I'll stand here for a little bit until I doze off. And with that, you all make your way to sleep. And it's difficult to fall asleep as your minds won't stop racing, but you're able to as you enjoy a long rest. That's cool, baby. You're woken abruptly, all of you, almost at near the exact same time as you hear the sound of tumbling rocks, as you shield your head for what sounds like an avalanche. Your ears have been pressed to the ground as you slowly open your eyes and in the very faint light of the second moon, you're able to see the carriage as it rolls up alongside you. The door opens. And you see a cane and a foot tapping along to the music. This time, the music spilling out. And from inside the carriage, you see a small feminine head pop out. Long, dark hair, beautiful, um, deep, warm brown eyes. As you see a woman in fashionable clothing, near skin tight to her body, fringe dangling down around her, her hair tied up with a, a cute little uh, headband uh, covered in jewels, keeping it back, a large feather um, spilling out from what appears to be the, um, the, the jewel of a crescent moon. As you see her uh, slap her arm onto the inside. Um, oh, Philip, look at it. Look at him. Look at him. Oh, Philip, look at him. They're so cute. I think that there were spirits here. Philip, if there were spirits here, I'm going to lose it. Oh my gosh, I know who you are. You must be Brixie. You are Philip. I'm so excited. You must be Marius. You're Grim Ferrum Lethica. Oh, Jericho, look at you, old scarecrow. Like, don't you worry. I brought my sage and I also, oh my gosh, I even brought my pendulum. We're going to make this place as homey as it can possibly get. And that's where we're going to end the session. <laughs>
Oh, well done. Oh, well done. What oh, is- well done. Well done. And yeah. I would say you can imagine that that is probably his wife, Adela. Adela, <laughs> that I would remember you know, her you name. Don't say. Yeah. Oh, you don't say, Philip. Look at him. They're so beautiful. <laughs> A little bit Adela. of gigawatt. That's gigawatt, I see. Oh, that was great. I love that. Thank well done. you. Thank you for being here with us tonight or for having us at 1% while your grandma visited for story hour. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't uh, uh, anything having to do with the critical role or anything, you know. Uh, yeah, we're not done. Yes, what's we're gonna, next? What, what's next? Oh, boy. Up next, we are going to do a Vantress and Chill, which is normally a subscriber-only um, I- adventure, but... As of right now, it's for everybody. For now only. For now only. Um, this could be the last water time. And join us. <laughs> yeah, grab some giggle water oh and join gosh. us. So what it is, we talk about our favorite moments from the session. You uh, talk about your favorite. Moments. We talk about your favorite moments and comments. And, we ask questions. Uh, generally, it's a uh, it's a little bit of a more intimate yeah. setting uh, for for our subscribers, but everybody gets a little sneak peek, and maybe that'll give you the uh, punch you need to. To subscribe if you're feeling it, but no pressure. And uh, if you enjoyed that crooked house, uh, the entirety of it will be on Patreon. Yes, it will. Uh, by the next time we play this session, which is next Thursday. We'll yeah. get it to you by next week. Beautiful. Um, so join our Patreon if you. It's the best way to support us. Or if you want. Uh, if you want. Or dot. You know, don't yeah. worry about it. No pressure. If you're cool. No pressure. Uh, and thank you for all the new people that joined us tonight. Yeah. And I yeah. hope you yes. enjoyed it. A lot of followers. Join our Discord. Uh, check out our YouTube. It has all of our past sessions. This is our four year anniversary in two days of streaming. Oh, yeah. so Happy four birthday years of content. to us. Happy um, birthday to With a bit us. of a year long hiatus in between. Uh, but other, other than that, it's uh, more or less four years of content. So um, join us. Please. Yeah. So. We're going to cut over that. right now. So good oh, night, everyone. Grumpy, for the follow. Thank you for the follow, follow Grumpy. Um, and Ooh, if you're grumpy. not sticking around, goodbye. We love you. We're cutting over right now. <laughs>